just remember that you're not the voice in your head. You're just the one that listens to it. Mm. So like it, it is always there. It's never going away, but it's not you. Mm-hmm. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the number one mental health and addiction podcast, The Hopeaholics. I am your girl, Natalie Eva Marie, and these are my boys. I'm Chad. I'm at Shane Earn, baby. Hell yeah. Brothers. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow us on our socials and wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, new episodes dropping every Tuesday and Friday. Check them out. This episode is brought to you by The Infinity Group. You guys, if you or a loved one is suffering, please call us today. The number is right here on the screen. We are here for you 24-7. Now, let's get into the episode. Let's get into, we got big dog in the house. Big dog. Yeah. It is absolutely a pleasure uh, having you on the podcast, Chad and I got to meet you and hear you speak at the charity event for veterans um, a couple weeks back, and you're amazing. You're a stud. I mean, you're a savage. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, but it's pretty crazy. I mean, a green beret. I know. I'm scared. I know. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I was thinking. His his demeanor, his look. I mean, when he walked. That's how you know when someone's legit. That's you know what why? I'm saying. Because he, he doesn't he, have to tell you. He doesn't look like a killer. It's just the same. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? He looks like he's that's humble. not a compliment. <laughs> 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 but that's what I've. He I've, looks soft and No, weak. no, I didn't. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's for sure not. I know, I'm just you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, you can't. Yeah, because. You can't pick the guy. No, like because I in our heads, we think of like. Like um, something that is not really right? typical in the yeah. sense of what I feel like the special. Rambo. Op- yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 John Wayne in the Green Berets. Yes. The yeah. A-Team. Those yeah. are all Green Berets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the A-Team yeah. was Green yeah, Berets. Green Berets. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you old enough for that? What do you mean? The A-Team? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I had the action figures and everything okay. when I was a kid. I had the, even the van, you know. Nice. Yeah, nice. so did I. I love yeah. that shit. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. Awesome. I mean, I was, they always had uh, to put dude. back. They always had to put Clever Lang to sleep because yeah, because he, he, he hated the fly. What you doing to me now, boy? Yeah, yeah, I love. But that his guy. name wasn't Clever Lang. That's that's, that's in that's Rocky, 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 dude. That's right. Wow, that's right. You're that's getting right. mixed that's up. Right. His name. name is actually Mr. T. I don't Mr. know what T. he was on the on yeah. the A team, but he got uh, cancer. B A Baracus. B A Baracus. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He got cancer. Lost a lot of weight. He's living now, but he's really. Thin down. I didn't know that. He's actually a veteran too. Is he? Yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah, in, he oh, was wow. in, I don't remember which branch, but he was really young, oh, like eighteen yeah, to twenty yeah, or something, yeah. and then went into the, you know acting and yeah. all that. But. I will tell you. Uh, so Rocky uh, is big. You know, Rocky the movie was really big, uh, in, influential movie in my life. But but then I was like probably like fifth grade when like Rambo came out and. All, all and I, I grew up in an area where I had you know a lot of big yard and um all we did me and my friends was play uh, Rambo Rambo yeah mm-hmm. yeah we would play Rambo it's funny you know looking back on it, first of all you, Stallone the two two of the most iconic you know athletes no, right? and veterans ever Rocky and Rambo and he was a executive producer on MVP which is cool. Oh my god. I yeah. was right. Yeah, yeah. Seeing that. He he helped That is he, right. He Balboa helped us Productions. Make it yeah, exactly. I remember seeing that too wow. and I was like, "Oh, snap, that's crazy." Yeah, him yeah, and his amazing. his uh, producing partner Braden Aftergood. I met Braden when I was interning at a production company like 8 years ago or 7 whenever it was. And we just stayed in touch and then when he took took that job and became Stallone's part producing partner, he was like you're working on an MVP script, right? And I sent it to them, and they just helped. I mean, they didn't ask for anything. They just helped it circulate and get people to read it, and then and helped with notes and all that stuff to get it. Wow! Shout out ready. to Sly. Yeah, that's big. Shout out to Sly. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, he's cool. And th- th- watch that documentary if you haven't on it. It's really interesting. It it's is. on Netflix right now. Yep. Yeah, because it talks about, I mean, where he was at in life mm-hmm. when Rambo, f- or excuse me, when Rocky yes. finally got made, and people were. It was a great script that he wrote, yeah. and people were trying to give him, you know, a million dollars for I the saw, script. I, I saw yeah. the the beginning of it. They were, they were trying to shoot him out of that. Not yeah, get they were going to, yeah. they wanted like, you know, Low Paul, Paul Newman yeah. or somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And yes. he's like, yes. no, like, I want to do this. You know? I wrote this script yeah. Yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I want to play. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Because yeah. of obviously like the previous things that he would only get cast as you know, a thug or right. And couldn't get out of that. And then was told about because he had, uh, you know, his 
what does he call it? It's not a list, but it's basically because of the way that he was born. His little oh uh, yeah no that's yeah why you're his, right like half his face you know he, he talks the way that he talks which actually yeah, totally it's works it's almost like numb or something yeah like, like, like you know he can only make an ex- you can only right. sc- that snarl that yes. curled lip is like from you know birth <laughs> exactly and that's what was so in- to me like endearing about that character Rocky it just makes you uh like I mean, him who that couldn't more? get behind Rocky? Oh man, you know, know. he's such an underdog. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like it's great. It's, it's great. It was perfect that he obviously I mean, it's even perfect. Th- they did it one best picture, you know. I, yeah, <laughs> and then continued and made it exactly what it is yeah. today. Like, it, I mean, Rocky Three was probably my favorite I, as a kid because I think I was like in third grade, and I'm just like in in the, the eye of the great tiger. Yeah. Those yeah. are the best months yeah. with yeah. the half shirts on the beach. Oh, yeah, God. they're, they're hard to beat. I mean, they're see, that's the thing. I, even I grew up in that one. era. Yeah. They were I was hugging each other. I was like, I was like, you know, I was like a chunky kid, so I couldn't wear that those half shirts, but my brother did. Yeah, you know what though? But I do love the montage. I think it's Rocky Four when he goes plays fights the russian because obviously yep. he killed apollo yeah. yeah so he goes and you see him basically doing all of the work but but doing it on your own in the snow, the snow and, and the logs Siberia and everything like just yeah. killing it yep. yeah sit-ups in the barn like, oh hanging yeah. From the yeah it's yeah. like Sit. the stuff that they talk about in motivational like a motiversity and stuff like sometimes you've got to disappear and that's what he yeah he did he disappeared into his dark room mm-hmm. so that he could train without any of the outside bullshit that goes on in this world that causes you uh distraction it's like musicians you know and they go record oh, yeah. their 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 album they go to the stick yeah, somewhere right. so there's no distractions like hey for a month or whatever we're out. just doing this yeah you know? it's incredible but going back because obviously mvp was made because of you know your life is pretty wild in the sense of you moved to los angeles kind of thought maybe you were going to dabble into possibly acting and seeing what that's about. And then all of a sudden um, got something in you to join the military. Yeah, like exactly. Walk us through that because that's – and how old were you at the time when you were like, you know what, I'm going to go do this now? I was 23 uh, okay. when I finally decided to join. I mean, I, 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 gra- I went to you know high school in the Bay. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Bay. Shout out to the Bay. Moved to what's San Diego. Uh, what's left? Jesus, I'm so <laughs> I mean, you can say the same thing about Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, say it. We're like in the little. That's fine. Nugget they're, of they're what's Angeles. left of California. Yeah. But it's okay. The, this is it. This is all you got now, and it's really just South Orange County, dude. It ain't even where you live. All right. It's, you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I moved to San Diego, um, Raptor High School, mm-hmm. and. I had a couple of buddies I went to school with. I mean, I grew up playing baseball, basketball, all these other sports, and not football, which is important to the story mm-hmm. later. For sure. Uh, because it, it was always my favorite sport. And when I was a kid, and they're back right now, but the 49ers were really good. So I was yep. you know, a huge 49er fan. And yeah, and so I was in San Diego, and I moved down there with a couple of buddies from high school because they were going to firefighter school mm. down there. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool, interesting. I, I had no idea what I wanted to do at all. I knew I didn't really want to go to college, at least at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I just packed up, moved down there. Um, we all got an apartment together and I started taking classes and not that I wasn't into it. It was super interesting. I just was like, man, this is like a grown up job. I'm 18. Yeah. I am not ready to have somebody's life in my hands. Right. And so I started working on a fishing boat, which I really loved and it was good money, you know, uh, and and doing other odd jobs too. When fishing season wasn't happening, I was doing the little bike taxis they used to have mm, down there. Yeah, you know, yeah. they yeah, probably yeah, still yeah, still yeah, have yeah, them. Yeah. 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 yeah, So I did that in you know in the off season, and then uh, after about a year, or I guess a little over a year, I moved up here, uh, or moved up to L.A. anyway, because I was interested and in, all of a sudden became interested in film and TV. It wasn't something I ever uh, saw myself being a part of or whatever, but I think I was just sort of discovering who I was and what I was into and you know what types of stories inspired me and I ended up just like well I mean why not go up there and be a part of that or try to anyway and so I moved to LA I just partied you know Mm -hmm. and I took acting classes and but I never you know I never really pursued it I think I was just scared of failing sure also I didn't really know I don't know. I was just, I also felt like, I felt like an outsider because I didn't really connect with actors yeah. necessarily. 
And so uh, 9-11 happened in, when I was 20. And I, even then, I wasn't, I was like interested in it, thought about it, but didn't join. And uh, it took like three years of, I think for me, and I, I don't recommend people intentionally spiral, yeah. <laughs> but I had to, you know, that was just my, my path. I yeah. had to like kind of go downhill a bit and not be good to myself, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, all of it, yeah. all of it you know, and, uh, and then eventually I, I had the opportunity to do some relief work over in Africa. And I went on that trip because I read about this genocide going on and how they needed help. But really it was like, I needed help. You know, I needed just to have some type of, I feel like I make a difference in somebody's life and do something, you know, of value. I just didn't feel like I did that at all. And so when I went out there, it was through that trip that I, um, I knew when I came home, I was going to join the military and I didn't know what I was going to do. But then I found out about the special forces and the green berets and to, to touch on that real quick about the look of like what you're typical, sure. like if you, when I went to basic training and even to the start of like special forces selection, if I took a lineup of all the people, um, that I, if I were to guess who was yeah. going to make it, I wasn't going to be one that I was going to pick cause I'm not a big guy now, but at that time I was, you know, thin. And, yeah. you know, it's not healthy. <laughs> um, and you look at the people that you think and, you know, they're just like athletes, beasts, you know, yeah. and most of them didn't. didn't and then the it. people yeah. that don't look the part in your mind did because it has nothing to do with that. Right. It's just who's not going to quit. You don't know. You know, people surprise you every day. For sure. You know? So the whole don't judge a book, all yeah. that. It's yeah. very true in that regard with, with the, the army, with special forces specifically. And so when you joined, you were 23. Is 23. there is there a cutoff? Age for joining 32. It's 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 higher oh, than you think. Yeah, that is higher than I think. I think it's like 32. Damn. For even, um, Damn. but there's a waiver Special. for everything. No, there's a waiver <laughs> there's for there, everything. That's a service. famous saying in the army. Yeah. You know? <laughs> even even for like the special selection process. Yeah, yeah. For that, I think it, I think it's 32. So the contract I got it was called the 18 X-ray contract. 18 series is the special forces like MOS identifier. An x-ray with somebody like me that came off the street, didn't have prior army experience, mm -hmm. not uh, conventional forces at all, just, you know, this is what I want to do. So you go basic training, airborne school, kind of straight into selection. And oh, I wow. think I think 32 was the cutoff, at least at the time. Okay. Um, yeah. Because there were some older cats. Like, I was older. I mean, yeah. you know, I didn't go to selection until I was 24. Uh -huh. But there was people, you know, much older than me. So when you went, because I'm just fascinated by just like the different branches, I know, and me then too, right? uh, also when it comes to you know the selection process and things of that nature, because only a, a small amount of people make it. So that's right. why I was saying I was making the joke, but not really about how you could kill Shane <laughs> this afternoon with your pinky. <laughs> Um, I mean, if my pinky was on the trigger, <laughs> then yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but did, did no, you he, know, he knows that spot. Shane. He knows there's that a, spot right a spot. in the water. Yeah, exactly. the yeah, furnace, you just, right? you just, all you have to do is just bam. Right here in the throat. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Choke. See ya. See ya. See ya. Good night. Dead. Um, Break the learner. <laughs> you go. You go through basic training, and is that where you're like, oh, okay, I want to go take this further and not just be in. Um, I guess, what do you call it? Just like conventional forces, yeah, conventional regular forces. army. Yeah, we yes. used to call it just regular army. Uh, so, to, I mean, you, you, you can do that. Typically, if you don't, if you didn't have that contract like I had, that 18, it's called mm -hmm. the, the 18 X-ray contract. If you didn't have that, I don't think you could actually apply for the special forces until you'd been in a couple of years. Okay. And you, you, you know, went up a couple of ranks. Um, okay. You know, he started as a private and then private first class and then a corporal and whatever. I think you had to be at least a corporal or a specialist to um, apply mm -hmm. to go to special forces selection. Because you're supposed to be a sergeant by the time you graduate. Okay. And that does take time. But with our contract, if you get it, you actually start basic training, a, a, you know, a, an upgraded private. You're still a sure. private. And then once you get through selection, uh, then you you are given, you know, the next rank up. And by the time you finish the entire special forces qualification course, which takes like a year and a half to two years, wow. it's very long. Then you're a sergeant anyway, because of the time in. So, whoa. Yeah. Okay. So after basic training, then you go in to the selection process. 
Yeah. How yeah, many pretty of much. You, guys? you go to like airborne school first. You got to okay. do the, 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 you know, it's like, and airborne school is not hard if you're not afraid to jump out of a plane. It's <laughs> a funny guy, man. It's not, though. If you're not afraid to jump out of a plane. Are you afraid hard. to jump out of a plane? I mean, I was really a little not. bit, you know. I remember my first jump because I was standing in the, I was the first one out the door oh. of the plane we're in. So I'm like and you're a little jump. nervous. And then the, the door opens and I'm like, damn. Oh my God. I did not want to be in front at that point. Right. I thought it was cool until we were up yeah. there. And then I was like, oh, that looks not that far, you know. Oh, and are you jumping by yourself? <laughs> or are you with, are you. There's like a stack of, you know, a dozen. No, but she went so. duo. Are you? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh no, you're solo. <gasps> you're solo. You're solo, but it's not, it's not, it's called static line. It's not, it rips it's not free fall. So it you don't. Yeah. As soon as you come out of the plane, the plane you hook up to this little you cord. Hook up and it, Pulls it itself. Yeah, and you and jump. If that out, doesn't work. He's got a secondary shoot, shoot that he pulls. Yeah, and then there's a third one. No, I don't know. There's two. There's two. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, you're only at like a thousand feet. Yeah, or something. So it's not a lot of time. Oh my god. If it doesn't work, you got to kind of get get it out. You know. <laughs> That's horrifying. Okay, so you go there. You go. Yep. You do that training, mm -hmm. and obviously you, everybody has to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What makes you not pass? Airborne school. Mm -hmm. Jump refusal or. You get hurt. Uh, most people pass, okay. honestly. Like, you, if you get to airborne school, most <clears throat> most of those people pass. It's a totally different story once you get to special forces training because it's very physical in nature, me you know, mental. Mental, well. right? Yeah. You're on your own a lot, and you got to. It's not like the tasks you're asked to do are, you know, you don't have to be a genius, but when you're out in the woods at night and you have just a compass and a map and like a grid coordinate, you do have to plot that figure it out and then use terrain features to like go where you're going and it's kind of you know if you're not a super woodsy person i yeah. grew up in the city you know there's a little bit of you hear something snap and you're yeah. like it's supposed to be a badass green beret no, and you're totally. like picking through yeah. you know prickly vines like oh yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but no one's watching so yeah, it's yeah, fine. yeah 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 <laughs> you know. that's insane so then after you get over it after airborne <laughs> school you pass then you go into selection process? Then you go to selection, yeah. So selection is like three-ish weeks. Long. I think it was 24 days or 28 days or something like that. And every day, it, I mean, it's different stuff. And you're out there with, I think it, it was two selections they ran per year, you know, with, with 250 candidates or something and like that. And those 250, are they all from the Army or are they from other branches? Like 98% Army. Okay. There might be a few. And sometimes we have people from other countries that come and do the training, which is really interesting. That's actually super cool. Uh, and they'll come through, you know, our special forces training. They obviously have to go through a long vetting process, sure. and they're part of. They're obviously an ally and mm -hmm. part of their special forces. But we do that too. But yeah, it's mostly yeah, probably ninety eight percent army. You might have a couple of marines and maybe someone from the navy or something. But it's yeah. And you guys don't important. like those guys when they come in. <laughs> nah, it's cool. You know, if you're going to humble yourself and join the good guys. You know? Right. Uh, but yeah, no, so that's the tough part because from that, uh, from selection there, I don't know what the numbers are, but I mean, less than half make it through. And then, then you start your year and a half long training and then <coughs> continually people are weeded out through all wow. of that or, or quit or, you know, cause it never really gets easy. Yeah. It's um, continuous yeah. of whether it's mental or physical, just kind of you're in it. You're now, in are, is there anybody, uh, any, uh, buddy badder than the Green Berets? No. No. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I mean, feel I'm like, like it's, yeah. the top of the, it's the top of the food chain, though, right? In the, in the Army, I mean, it's equivalent to, like, the SEALs in the Navy or the, you know, what used to be called Marine Recon in the, in the Marine Corps um, or the Pararescue in the air force like there's every branch has that um but there's also uh you know uh, delta force which is like a nut that's purely hostage rescue and um counterterrorism. like they're a very specific mission it's a very small group and they all come from you know the special forces or the ranger battalion the rangers are very very badass too it's just a different unit you know and they're they we're like in 12-man teams on a deployment kind of isolated and we were working everything we do is by with and through indigenous forces you know no matter what country you're in so you learn language or at least some of it you have to like kind of appreciate or at least respect the customs and cultures that you may not agree with you know and kind of work together because you're you know you're fighting alongside people that are 
like if you're trying to um, you know, overthrow an existing government and stand up something that makes more sense for the people, you know, some type of democracy or whatever, uh, or you're trying to defend what is there, you know, against a coup, mm -hmm. then like that you have similar interests, but there's just so much that there's still plenty of things I just don't agree with or it's sure. really hard to understand and kind of let go of, but it's just the culture, you mm -hmm. know, and you just kind of have to. What is the, there is another, I don't know if I'm using the correct terminology, but is there, isn't there another branch where you guys from any other branch can possibly join as well as another special uh, forces or operations? Probably. No? Um, are you, is it outside of the army or is it still within the army? It's right outside now? of, I believe it's outside of the, I think it's outside of the army. There is. Ta there talking are, about there, the CIA. No. There, <laughs> there no. are units like that though, that work as, you know, similar, similarly to the CIA, but they're part of the military and they're not necessarily, as far as I know, I'm not sure if they fall under army or what, or if right. they're kind of their own thing. Like that stuff does exist for sure. Okay. I don't know the details of, yeah, of yeah, all of right. that. I've You're met some right. of those guys, and I'm like, I still don't quite understand what, what they is. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> or what right. It's like CIA know. type shit, I yeah. think. Um, okay, so then the Green Bray, you're there for a year and a half, starting 250. There's about 250 guys that start it. Mm -hmm. Half of them make it through that first initial process, which is what, six months? No, no, no. The first, the selection is just like, that's the thing that's three or four weeks. Oh, okay. So only, yeah, I'd say... At least when I was there, I think it was like 40% made it okay. through that. And then from there, probably half those people made it all the yeah. way through to the end or what, something like what's that. What's the hardest? What's the hardest part? Do you guys have like a like a hell week? Month? It's the beginning. The beginning is the hardest. That's what that month Not is. The, the selection? The selection is the hardest. Yeah. The hardest. For, it, physically anyway. Knowing but, Shane uh, for the, few, uh, the hour and a half, would he make it through selection? Uh, Mentally? Yeah, 100%. Thanks, buddy. I've watched these selections before. Um, I'm uh, love them. I'm like hands, fascinated. Kicking in the water with water running over your face. I mean, you know which one yeah. would check me out? Whichever one where you're buried to your neck, neck <laughs> after. Well, how about them throwing you in the water with your hands tied in your that, Oh, that tied. too. The Navy. I'm scared Is of the that ocean. the SEALs? Yeah, that's yeah. more the SEALs. You guys I mean, are in. We the do have a dive school, so we have, you know, scuba teams and stuff like that. Uh, but if you don't. If you aren't part of one of those teams, you don't have to go through the water portion. That's yeah. one of the reasons I joined. The I'll tell you <laughs> yeah, because sure. like the Get Navy that. is like, yeah. no, the You're ocean is terrifying. Dude, terrifying. fucking out scares there. the crap out of me. There's so yeah, much stuff too. down there that we don't even know about. Yeah, you know? exactly. I'm People are worried about space. I'm like, what about the what ocean? about our space down yeah. below? Yeah. I mean, Jaws you can start with sharks. I don't like them. Yeah, uh, exactly. octopuses. Is that how you say it? Uh, is it the I think plural? It's octopi. <laughs> I think. I don't know. In front of women, it's octopi. Um, I would never. I would. Uh, I said pusses. Yeah, you did. I, did. I right. would never quit. If I'm 18, 19, 20, I make a commitment with a buddy of mine, or I meet someone at basic training, and we we get together. I would never fucking quit on that person. Yeah. Like that's who I was when I was even today. I'm physically not capable, but when I was younger, even working work ethic, I would never stop a, a fucking workout or or, or, a, or a, never. That's what you say now. Not sleep deprived. Not cold. I'm agreeing. I'm just saying that I would go. I would never. I would think I would never quit. So there's a waiver for everything. I'm yeah. telling you, you should. <laughs> At fifty, how old are you now? Fifty fucking seven. Next month. Next month. Maybe, maybe not a waiver for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, Senior yeah. citizen. Senior citizen, bro. So what? Uh, tell us a little, just a little just a glimpse of the the three weeks, the tough parts that people don't where people don't make it. Yeah, I mean the 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 biggest part of it that gets people is the the long distance movements, you know, long range mm -hmm. movements. So you always have a rucksack on everywhere you go, and it's like minimum forty five pounds. That doesn't count food, water, and whatever else you know so it's like if you if your rucksack ever is weighed an ounce below that like you know what i mean just see you it. later yeah and you can't use roads you know you have to stay off the roads at least 50 meters off the roads so that's another thing like you can use them to help guide you and sure. navigate and you should you're you're kind of it's stupid to not use that you just can't walk on them mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and the point of that i mean it makes sense if you were yeah you know stuck behind enemy lines but you knew where you needed to go or whatever and you're on your own like you need to know how to navigate to that place 
Uh, but you can't be going down the middle of the road like you're going to get spotted. Yeah. You know, so uh, so it's like it's that and, and the and the 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 distances vary. You know, some days you may only go 10 or 15 miles Jesus. and, you know, other days you might go 40, you know, Whoa. it's so it's wow. like it takes a toll and you're in boots and camis. Yep. And, you know. and it's timed and it's time. You always but have a rifle with you. Do you know the time? Or not no, the time. You don't know the time. You, you don't. Oh, know that's time. another key. That's horrible. Piece. So you're. You don't know. So you don't know if you could take a little, you know, fast walk. You're hustling the entire time. Yeah. That's yeah. brutal. Did so you have any? They, ever have any that you were just like you almost? They didn't make it. So they they tell you. They kind of tell you like these are the minimum standards as far as like how many point like for the land because land navigation is a big part of it, right? Yeah how many points you need to find mm. oh, you know over this period they they kind of are they're a little vague about it from what i remember it's a long time ago but yeah for the most part i feel like i had a pretty good idea of what i needed to do and and i knew that there was a lot more to come after this so it was like you're you're doing all this and you're going as hard as you can but at the same time you do need to be cognizant that you know like a game this is not the fourth quarter so I need to do my best right now, but I, but I need to save something in some way, you know, a little bit because mm -hmm. if I just can't blow your wad. Yeah, no. And if you hurt or if you hurt yourself, you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that there. <laughs> You've never heard that before? Yeah, yeah we I, have. Just I have out of your mouth. That's not from a lady. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm Natalie. the youngest of all boys. Holy so how many times? Fuck, your mom's going to watch this one. My yeah. mom's going to watch this one. My mom's going to go, what's your wad? <laughs> no, that's my mom's You're, question. My, 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 we use it in the gym. How much money you have yeah. in your pocket? Yeah. Cash, yeah. Okay. cash, exactly. buddy. Cash, baby. Can't blow your, you blow it all can't blow your oh, cash. shoot. Okay. Jeez. Wow. Holy smokes. I went right to the gutter. I mean, it's that, too. I think. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Sorry. No, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Chad, Chad, Chad went there, too. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I she said it, funny. and then I looked at your face, and you were like, uh, uh, "Have you guys shock. heard that?" Of course, in gyms all the time. I feel like in gyms you hear it a lot. But they also say. Yeah. Load. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Different. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, then but similar. He, but similar. similar. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, now that we're minds are <laughs> yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not in the gutter anymore. Um, okay. So twenty percent are making it through. Yeah. So so okay. So like days. For instance, when I did, uh, there was this one portion where I think it's three or four days in a row. That's all you're doing. Yeah. And you're going, you know, long distances. And besides that, you're doing some. They have like team week where yeah. you do. You know, uh, you have to like build these crazy contraptions and then move them across. You know, and at this the point, desert your feet are bleeding, sand. obviously. Oh yeah, everybody's got blisters and rolled ankles, and yeah, you're a mess. You're you're, a mess. you're a total mess. You're 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 always hungry. You're always thirsty. You're sunburned. You're you know, <sighs> if it's summer or you're yeah. freezing your ass off because it's winter. Like I went to one of the schools is like a mock POW camp. You know, I can't oh, get into shit. too much details on that, but I went there in February and it was terrible. Butt but, naked, oh. freezing, <laughs> oh my God, torturing yeah. you, making fun of you. Yeah, you can imagine why, especially when it's freezing. Oh. <laughs> We're like, this is that's, I'm cold. That's why. That's why they put you in there in yeah. the cold. Oh, they bring these. Damn, you know, Shane, it was just like that day I met you, Shane. But it was just like the day I met you. Yeah, yeah. When you were naked in the jacuzzi. Yes. But it was warm. hot, dude. I, I was warm. I was like, what the fuck? I was warm. Is that? Are you in a cold plunge? <laughs> Mark that. Shane was in a cold plunge. Cold plunge. <laughs> it wasn't a cold plunge, though. It wasn't what much do you of a prefer, <laughs> being hot or cold? Uh, probably cold. Depends on how cold. But I, I want, I, you know, I like to be able to put clothes on. But if it's, I mean, it depends on the. T I mean, how hot, how cold. Right. What do you mean? Yeah, you know I'm mm. saying. Like, I don't want to be negative twenty over. Like, I'd rather be. I'd rather be at you know a hundred and twenty, honestly, than like negative twenty. But if it's like. You're talking 20 degrees versus sure. 100 and something, probably 20 degrees. You put some clothes on. I don't know. Wow. No? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah don't me know. too. I'm with I him. I'm with him 20 degrees with a parka. I mean, yeah, that's true. And then yeah. You, yeah, you've yeah. been in in Texas in February. It gets chilly. It does. But it's not like that bad, right? Isn't it no. better than August in Texas? I, I kind of thrive in the heat. In the humidity, though, too? But see, I don't feel like where we are because we're in Salina. I don't feel like the humidity is like it is okay. in, say, Houston, San Antonio. Um, Houston's rough. I don't know about how humid Austin is. This year was very. It, it was, was hot. Okay, it was a hot so summer. Humidity and me are not friends because I have really your hair really yeah. frizzes up. Yep, you got it. I have natural Cotton candy. Hair, so it's like not yeah. not good for me. 
but so far i haven't experienced too crazy of humidity okay. but then but then she, you know, they don't just moved there a year ago, and she's been here yeah, since uh, true. July. Four months. Yeah. My first experience with humidity was in basic training in, jo- in Georgia. Ooh. <laughs> I just Ooh. didn't. I had never been to that part of the country. I didn't really know. And it was. Yeah. Man, it, was, it was hot. I went to rehab once in Memphis, Tennessee, in the <laughs> middle of summer. Ew. It was. It Gross. was. I bet it was you terrible. sweated it out, though. Fucking sweated it out. Yeah. I you were, yeah. you were in like and of three course, minutes. He was and like, of I'm course, good. like uh, one, uh, one. A week the air conditioner completely shut down so we mm. were you know that's yeah that's brutal that's how it is for me though of course i mean i, I deserved that though because yeah you I, deserve i'm that. not kind of addict yeah you deserve <laughs> and i am in recovery <laughs> <laughs> thank the lord yeah thank you jesus yeah um so okay. I, th- I feel like at the end of this podcast though just don't rem- remind me can you guys remind me over there at the very end of this co- podcast since we have an actual sp- special forces guy yeah. in here, I have a confession. Choke me out. I have a. Con- I, have a I, I have you a. Want con- to choke me out, don't you? <laughs> no, I have a. You con- want him to choke me out? Say it. No, you I know? have a confession say that it. I need to make on air. Oh, you of something oh, that happened this fuck weekend. You do. And I, I want to do it in front of a special forces. Yeah, it's, oh that's, wow. Yeah. Guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll remind be, you. Be, be, I'm I'll nervous. remind you. I'm, me too. And that's <laughs> you know real. what I'm talking about, Lewis. Yeah, and that's real. Remind me, okay? It's a real. It's a real. Oh, right. gosh. Yeah, it'll uh, be all right. Okay, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Okay, so you go, you make it through, and then. So oh yeah, oh yeah. Was it, this is the year and a half for the thirty no, this days. This is the th- we're at the What I was going to say was the we, we uh, yeah. So that but it's the most important part. We, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll skip through the year and a half. It's not as exciting. Yeah. Uh, but the the so finding those points. Remember, I was like, yeah. I. I I had a good idea of how many I needed to find. In the first two days, I crushed it. I was going real fast. I found all my points. I didn't have any hiccups. And then the third day, where I was like ahead of the curve, and I was like, well, I'm going to get all the points and just, you know, get an A plus and a gold star. Like, uh, and I get the first two, and I'm like feeling cocky and not like double checking my map. Yeah. Uh-oh. And I'm at the top of this mountain, and I like, oh, I'm like, I look on the, you know, I plot the point and look on the map. I'm like psh, straight shot south, you know, five miles or something. And then I'll hit a creek and then blah, 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 or train tracks. And so I just pack my map away and just start running and just haul ass down the mountain and keep going, going, going. Like an hour later, I'm like, shouldn't I have hit that creek by now? Like I'm, I'm like kind of confused. And so I'm like, you're good. Just keep going. Just keep going. Oh no. And then I, it, nothing, nothing, nothing. And it's middle of the night. So then I pull my map out and I realize I was supposed to go straight north and I went straight south. So I'm like five miles the wrong direction. Oh, well, 10 miles the wrong direction because I went the you know, oh, exact yeah. wrong oh my way. Gosh. Which is two hours. Yeah. yeah. And it's like middle of the night. I'm like, well, I'm never going to make it to that point in time. And so <laughs> I was like, I, but I'm ahead of the game and I'm tired. And this is why I did this also. I'm being cocky and lazy, but also I was, I was wiped. So you're not supposed to, but I like found a hole and like got in the hole and went to sleep <laughs> and slept until dawn and then woke up and, you know, went back in as if I couldn't find my point or whatever. So I got some extra sleep in, which was nice. What? Um, but that really helped me because then the next day was the last day of doing that. And I like crushed the last day and I was fine. I made it through. But okay. you just can't get caught. You know what I mean? If you do something like that, I mean, you could walk on the roads all day, too, if you want. But, you but can, if you get you caught, can confess, you're out. Like ten years later, to fifty. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to take it from yeah, me. No. Nothing. Wow, too late, man. that is. Yeah, it's not really cheating either. You took no, a nap. It's not, It'd be one not. thing if I, you know, took but a ride. It, but it was just like it happened. You know. Yeah. I've heard st- I've heard the other stories of people, you know, doing doing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, but all that is is like you gotta adapt, and clearly you're like you know what. I'm going to just dig a little hole and say it w- goodnight. It wasn't going to, ha- like, the odds of me making it backwards to 10 miles, even though I was ahead when I started and still making the time thing were not good. Probably impossible to actually get back to that point anyway. So I would have, like, went 10 miles the wrong direction or 10 miles back the right direction eventually, but, and, like, wore myself out even more to not even get that point, 
you know, and not even get the count. Yeah. If you don't make it in time, you don't get the credit for it. And I was like, well, if I just do that, I'll just lay down, I'll save myself. And then, you know, when the index and we're over, then I'll call it in and just be like, oh, I'm here in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so that's what I did. But anyway. Do they have like days where they like will pick you guys up though? And, and this like you didn't know if you were going to be. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. And or not. I, I was in the back of the. It was after that one. Actually, I was in the back of the truck. Now, did you tell the story? Because this, this is a vaguely sounds familiar to me. I don't think I did. No. But this is probably a common story. Oh, you know really? what I mean? And yeah. I went. So what I eventually found after I woke up, I found. Uh, there was like a farmhouse because I could hear animals and uh, I went to this farmhouse and went up to the uh, the front door of where someone lived and it was like dawn and I like knock on the door I'm like in, not thinking yeah I'm in like camo <laughs> oh and like God. with a rifle yeah. in my hand yeah. like camo yeah 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 <laughs> and we're not on base we're in the right. you know we're just yeah. in the country yeah. like, they don't yeah. do it looking on base. real friendly <laughs> yeah I'm knocking the door and this lady like cracks the door open and then just like shuts it in my face. And she was terrified. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing a training exercise. Can I, like, you sure. know, I borrow your phone? Oh. So then the truck Can came I and picked me up. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then the truck came, picked me up and I was in the back of like this, you know, uh, like a you know, military mm -hmm. people carrier. Yeah. And just in the bed of it. And there's somebody else back there, too. And he's looking down and i'm just like oh boy yeah and we go back and like lets us out and then just go back into the barracks and that's it and nothing i didn't get in trouble and the wow. other guy either yeah the other guy was fine too oh he thought well he maybe they i don't know what happened later yeah it's at the moment you know, yeah but it, i was worried for the rest of the day until i was like doing the next thing and then i was like oh i guess i'm good wow you know? i mean that's kind of horrifying. that's some crazy shit yeah i know crazy huh? shit bro it yeah. is a lot of dedication man you know so yeah. what is the average uh is, is there an average um like height and weight that make it through the green berets um i don't know it's probably about my size it's not not, not big guys. not not big right no, generally no. no i had it's a mix heard, though i had heard mix. the big guys don't make it that you were talking about those yeah. big guys that look like some of them do though you know you know some of them definitely do but I'd say, yeah, by and large, they're yeah. not large. Rambo yeah. is actually more like my size, you know, like maybe like 170. Oh, still on? Still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like 5'5 five, five in real life, no, isn't he's he? He's taller than that. No. Huh? No. I think he's like 5'8. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, gonna, he wears those things give, in his shoes. I was going to give him 5'9. Yeah, were? yeah, we'll give him 5'9. Nice. Yeah. Well, 5'9 is good. It's the average height of a man. Yeah, 5'9 is solid. When I, I was doing my uh, dating profile, I had put 5'9 on it. Even though I'm five seven, because some girls had swiped this way. If you're under five nine, so I just put five nine. Yeah, of course. And uh, I married a girl that was five nine. <laughs> <laughs> you won. I won. You won. I won. You won. Yep. Good for you. You would say I won, right? For for Donna. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He married off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like my my husband says. Literally married he, off. Uh, Your husband said I. Yeah. I, I, no, he I, said. Uh, um, you're batting out of your league. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, that's yeah, what your yeah. husband told me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, out, we say in football, we say you, you outkicked your coverage. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like it too. I'm gonna use that. Yeah. So. Okay, you get through your training. It was hellish because that's a long time. Two years. Yeah, a year and a half. Two from, years. from the beginning of that's basic. Insane. To the that's insane. That's a long time of just being yeah. put through this continuous ringer but it makes sense to me because if these are the baddest motherfuckers out there you're putting them through it because when it, the time comes mm. you guys are going to be obviously physically able to handle lots of things but it's your mind it's yeah. the the mental aspect of being either where you're at at any given moment and being able to perform and right. handle business and do what you need to do so i feel like the two years kind of makes sense because that is a long time to be continuously getting just things chucked at you left and right and you have to be able to be ready to go so i feel like it's kind of i mean it's long that's a strenuous yeah amount of time no but it's also like if you know the other people in your group also went through because you know how bad it is for you sure. and it's like well it's just automatic respect well they went through it too even if you don't like them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i can trust you yeah because i know you you did that too and you also didn't quit and 
What's What's it feel like? So you made it through. So you don't don't get your Green Beret until the end, right? Very end, yeah. Very end. You finished all the training. Yeah. What's it feel like to get that Green Beret? Uh, it was it was awesome. I honestly remember more after selection, even though I still had a very long way to go because that's the biggest hurdle. That's the the highest attrition happens there. Mm. And they had at the end of selection, they have all these. It's really cool. They have these uh, older Green Berets that are there, like Vietnam era guys, mm. and they're there. And they like separate you into two groups and you don't know. It's kind of messed oh, up, actually. You don't know yeah. which one is the right one to be in, you know. Oh, shit. And then oh. they'll like separate another group and just, they just, it's just mind games. Yeah. You know? And we're like standing there and I had a pretty good idea because I noticed some of the other people around. I'm like, there's no way that guy didn't make it. Like that guy was killing it on yeah. everything. And he's, you know, whatever. And, but you're still like kind of nervous and standing there and um, they start reading, you know, they're reading all the names off. Mm. And then at the end of it, like some guy walked up and like whispered in my ear and he was like, he's like, welcome to the brotherhood. Like, oh and then God. just like walked away. And I was like, you know, just had that rush of, nice. you know, like that feeling. Yeah. And that was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had chills. That's that was the end of selection. Cool. That, was, that was just the end of selection. I Which still is had actually like <laughs> so crazy. Talk about kind of like a mind fuck because yeah. it's like so like elation like you made it but it's like nah 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 bitch you're <laughs> yeah. just about yeah. to begin exactly well, i'll you tell you what i like cut. about that it's the same as the sub- sobriety they say 18 months is the magic number yeah to go through all oh, different interesting s- yeah. all different scenarios yeah. in your life to make sure whatever's thrown at you you have a way out it's in it's embedded in your brain and it's the same as you two years later they'll throw all these scenarios at you it's interesting so when someone walks this way you know to go that way yeah that's cool i didn't know, know that it becomes Maybe there's a, something about a that real time. not not just a habit Second but day. Nature. second nature yeah. Mm. second yeah. nature yeah that's cool but yeah i mean getting the earning the green beret was awesome too yeah. like the graduation was cool because it was like at that time these are your best friends yeah, you know course. after two years you get yeah. really close with it with the, with the group and so that was that was it's like our it's like a i mean it's like a college graduation for us because of you know how long that yeah. training is and how tight you become and um but i still remember that moment more with the i think because of the who said it sure. you know it's like and it's like I think I feel like it's the first phase. It's, mm-hmm. it's when a lot of people don't even make it past that. So it, I would assume that it would be a little more um, memorable because that's like yeah. first. Who's well, the first also, phase. also l- let me ask you this though: when you when when you made it right then, when when that guy said it to you, who was the guy? Did you know? I don't remember. I I couldn't even pick him out in a lineup. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. no, you're good. Did you know? That you were like, you know what? The the hardest part's done. I'm gonna fucking do the rest. Um, I didn't know, but I felt like confident. Yeah, I felt confident because I didn't feel. That's probably another part of it. Is I didn't feel confident in myself before really going to basic training. I mean, I felt confident in some ways. Like I wasn't afraid to try things, but I was definitely afraid to commit to things. Mm. You know, which is different. <laughs> you yeah. can start to do sure. something. I mean, whether it's reading a book, yeah. or whatever. It's easy to start reading a book, but to finish a book, especially if you're not into it, yeah, 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 you know, or it gets, it's just not grabbing you at the same, like that's committing to that and sticking with it is hard to do. And so, um, but yeah, getting through, getting through that, I was like, all right, well, at least I know I can do it now and yeah. we'll see if I actually do. But I felt, you know, that was one of those big building blocks of mm-hmm. confidence um, See, I think I, I, th- I think at my my age group, it's more uh, like Green Berets uh, just because of, of freaking John Rambo. Right. John Rambo, the A team. You didn't really hear anything about SEALs back then in the, in, right. in the 80s. Yeah, it and was Green Berets. Yeah. That was the shit. Now, how many uh, until uh, what's the is it called? This, I think it's called Navy SEALs, the one with like. Charlie Sheen and oh, Michael yeah. Bain and all those guys. I think it's called Navy. Yeah, Seals. I actually don't know. Yeah, I should know. But that that started that, and then obviously with you know the current war, this uh, Marcus Luttrell and the Lone Survivor mm-hmm. and that story, yeah. and Chris Kyle, you know, yeah. the American Sniper. Those things really built that um, recognition, I guess. Sure. Uh, but anyway, do, do you guys have? Did you have a, a a specialty on your team? Yeah. So every on the twelve out of the twelve people on the team you have your you have one officer you know and he's a uh, captain um 
And then you have the team sergeant, who's the highest ranking enlisted, and that's a master sergeant, E8. And then you have um, a, an intel officer and a warrant officer who kind of, they both handle a lot of the, the intel side of things and like that, you know, uh, <clears throat> information collecting and sources and talking to, you know, because you're, you're basically a 12 man army on mm -hmm. your own. Yeah. yeah. Like you are out there, you know, sourcing your own intelligence and creating some of your own missions and finding who are these, you know, the high value targets in this region and how do we go get them um, sort of on your own. And if you need reinforcements, then you ask for them, but you have to develop all that stuff for the most part on your own. So you have those four and then you have two medics, two uh, weapon sergeants, two engineers and two commo sergeants. And s all of us cross train. So we kind of do everything. I will say the one MOS, which I was not, that's the most difficult and the hardest to teach is medic, which yeah. probably makes a lot of sense. You know, that was just, th they had an extra six months of training, by the wow. way. So they, have, they go through or three months or six months, but it's a longer course for them because they actually go to an OR yeah. for three months and do rotations. You know what I mean? So yeah, like they're, wild. they're dealing with gunshots. They can literally yeah. stuff like operate that. you, yeah. operate, yeah. operate on you in the field. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, uh, you know, a, a step down from a field surgeon, really. Like yeah. it's, you know, it's, they're the best. They're the best in the military as far as that stuff. That's insane. Yeah. Those guys, had the, I, they always had the most respect for me. And I think most people in special forces feel that way because it's like. Yeah, they're going to keep you alive if shit yeah, goes down. Exactly. It's like that you need them or else the team. Is, mm -hmm. It's you're using gauze. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to something that is, you know, they can handle something. on a I mean, I'd want level. a guy that's really trained to be able to cut me open if I get shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah of shot course. And get the, you know. Yeah, keep me alive. You want to trust that person? Yeah. I do want to trust yeah. that person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more than your off, more than your commanding officer. Yeah, for yes. sure. Um, I have a question though. Just, just taking it back really, really quickly. Through that two years or that year and a half that you were training, at any given point, did you ever come to this mental space of wanting to quit? I never wanted to quit. Uh, it definitely felt like I wasn't going to make it in moments, you know, sometimes it's in the middle of training and I just felt like I'm going to get cut or whatever. And you start to sort of slow down when mm -hmm. you feel that way and think that way. So maybe you are kind of quitting or right. convincing yourself it's okay to quit, sure. you know, well, here's the, re you start to make justifications, yep. but I wouldn't say I ever wanted to, but I could see how that could happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, hell no, I'm no, never course. quitting, blah, blah, blah. Because I definitely had plenty of doubts and, you know, <laughs> one day you're crushing it and the next day sure. you're just getting crushed and you're just like, what did I, you know, what am I doing? Am I, I'm not right for this. Like, what am I, I'm, I'm this is crazy, I, yeah. you know, and then you finish that thing, you get through that suck fest, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we called SF, special forces. We also call it suck fest. Mm -hmm. You get through that suck fest of a day or week or month or whatever it is and you didn't quit you just finish and maybe you weren't at your top but you just didn't quit and then you're just like all right i'm okay you know you kind of regather your gather yourself and reassess the next thing and then just keep going and like, like anything with me when i get past halfway on something i feel like there's absolutely no turning back so that was really more on the front half of the training and yeah. stuff like that and even with selection the front half of selection mm -hmm. was when i was the most nervous and then once I saw people, when I see other people quit and I didn't, you know, it's negative, that, that negative, positive reinforcement, yeah, for sure. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, oh, people are actually quitting, which means this is hard, but yes. I'm not quitting. Yeah. So, so I'm doing yeah, Some so people I'm, just I'm, quit, right? They just quit. Yeah. yeah they, they can't do. handle the pressure. Yeah. Or they didn't even, honestly, they had a romanticized idea of what mm -hmm. it was. That's a lot of it, especially in the video, video game era. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But Call of Duty was a big thing at the time. And it's just like, this isn't Halo. Yeah. You know, it's different. <laughs> yeah. You know, for sure. it's very different. And it's not, it's not as cool as that either. Yeah. Like it's, it's just not. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's part of your training is live, live, uh, live rounds being. Yeah. We do, we just live rounds in a shoot house, you know, go through like scenarios like that. We do live tissue training on goats, um, even if you're not a medic. And that's crazy, you know. Wow. But, it's important, you know, sure. and um, you do a lot of yeah, some really high level stuff. Did you learn a language? Korean. I Whoa. forgot pretty much all of it, but I did <laughs> at the time. Wow. So I was decent. I mean, I went to Korea a couple of times and, you know, had a few drinks and, and could all speak the language, speaking, you know, yeah. but I, you know what? In reality, I probably know. 
I just thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are just being polite. They're like, yeah. yeah but yeah, I bet it was good enough. It. Just like yeah, Shane when he's trying to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Korea. Beautiful. <laughs> it beautiful is beautiful. beautiful. Nice people. Too. Very nice people. Yeah, very nice people. No, it was fun. Yeah. Korea was cool. Korea was cool. Japan was cool. I was in Okina stationed in Okinawa for yeah. uh, like seven months or so. Is that, uh, uh, people from, uh, wait, Okinawa? Is, in Japan. Is it, I was like, whoa, it threw me off for a minute. It's near like, Korea, though. Yeah, okay, no, okay. Yeah, uh, but uh, people from Okinawa, they uh, they have some of the- um, The blue zone. Longest, yeah. yes. Yeah. They're part of the blue zone. Yeah. They are, they're, their life expectancy is like- freaking 100 yeah 100 yeah they're really healthy but you know they smoke and you know they they drink i mean they do all yeah. these things but the thing that they that they do that first of all they, it's all measured and it's in check but they eat really healthy mm -hmm. and yeah extra and they get outside and walk at yeah. least and they like they're just you know they enjoy their life but it's not about it's not nothing's about excess i think that's like a key thing because that's one big problem here and whether it's substance or food For sure or whatever, like we just, you know, Americans, we, we do that. We go with our bad food that we have. We, and well, we, yeah, and, and we, we just eat, eat a lot of it. You know? Or and now anything is processed or. Totally. It's just Sprayed not, with pesticides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a ton of, terrible. it's a ton of, you know, they raw, don't have raw fish, any of vegetables and rice. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it's real super food. clean. Yeah. It's super healthy. clean. Yeah. Grown organically i mean why do we have to even have to call it fucking organically like that's how our food's actually supposed to be grown and like i could be completely wrong but because i'm no expert in this regard but i think when i think when you eat like that and when you get outside and do some type of exercise even if you do drink or smoke or whatever like you just you, you start to feel so much better when you are putting good things in your body mm -hmm. that even when you do those things you sort of like i think you just you're like, I don't need to do this all night or I don't need to like, whatever, you know, you kind of, I don't know. You just, everything else is, there's less excess everywhere else yeah. when, when, you know, yeah. those simple healthy habits. Yeah. Cause I know, I mean, overcoming an addiction is not an easy thing, right? Yeah. but I, th and I guess overcoming a food addiction isn't easy either, but I feel like maybe a little more controllable somewhat on your own, if you can start there, you know, and, and then the exercise piece, but then. I mean, some of the other stuff with substance, I think you do need outside help, you know, other people sure. to kind of, in my limited experience with that, you know. I wonder, you know, this got me thinking uh, as you're talking about this, because I didn't realize that they smoked. I knew they drank, but their, yeah, their tobacco smoke. is probably organically grown probably without yeah. pesticides. Yeah. Who's to say that if, you know, because that smoking is actually bad, except for the fact that our big tobacco took it over and you know that the, that all of those crops are sprayed and Addic yeah addictive stuff there the the, yeah. the uh, i have what well, a booger on my no face? no no the addictive there's addictive oh, stuff I I sprayed in the nicotine oh God. yeah i don't think well it also goes with food, food in the sense just if you're just talking about food if it's actually real food in your body when you consume say something that is already sprayed or has the sugar or has the high fructose whatever corn and all syrup. the corn syrup it sets something off in your brain chemically that you want more of it and then you consume more of it but when you're actually consuming like nobody if i ate a 32 ounce ribeye i'm gonna be I'm going to be good. I'm going to be full as opposed to if you give me all of the carbs that are all processed and everything, I'm going to want to just consume until I'm like a, a garbage disposal, never ending, you know, where it's that alone stops the excess. All if right. you're eating just actual real food, fruits, vegetables, the, the rice, everything is just actual food where I feel like out in America, not only do we consume a ton, but now it's become where you're having to search for real food, which is insane. That's yeah. that's crazy. It's yeah. uh, funny how we just we, we just go right on, right on topic to the. Are you hungry right now? I'm starving. Are you starving? I'm like I can always eat though. Yeah, I know, but we're doing we're doing. <laughs> we just started today, Gary Brecca's three day water. Fast. fast. You're on a water fast yeah. right now? Yeah. Just water? Just water yeah. for three days. Or, or I mean, so we're you on. started this morning. Did uh -huh. you eat this morning? No. no. I know. We, our last meal. Was, I'm not hungry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> our last meal was last night at yeah. uh, 6.30. 6.30, yeah. yeah. Hey. So until 6.30 on 
Friday. Friday. Thursday. No, Thursday night. Thursday. I'm eating Thursday night. Oh, yeah, it's he's, only he's, Tuesday. He's, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to eat Thursday night, even though, like, I don't know, Gary says to, they're doing it till, like, I'm eating. Like, I committed to 72 hours, not. That's a good amount of time. Yeah, it's funny. That's no joke. Yeah. I've only done a juice, like a three-day oh, yeah. ju- juice, I've, but I've never done just water. That's wild. Yeah, we'll see how we Supposedly last. Supposedly, we'll see, it, we'll see it who's cleared. the last man standing. Wait, how did you? How do you? Do you taper eating? So no, today, yeah, we we do because today and we get bone. oh we get bone <laughs> we get bone broth <laughs> we get okay. bone broth today. So like oh. the funny thing is, is we're really oh, looking. Didn't Dana White do this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I heard that's how I heard about this it. This is yeah. the Dana White. This okay. Is the same guy, Gary Brecca. We okay. just he's I doing see. it. Fifty thousand people signed up for this thing, and we stupidly signed up for it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, last night as I was eating my last meal, I was like, what are you doing? It's cool though. It's like selection. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Oh, trust it's me. It's too because it's hard. If I you have control over. If I it's start to think to about control. tomorrow at all, yeah, I'm I'm eating. But if I'm like, no, Chad, you can get through today. You yeah. worry about tomorrow when you wake up. Yeah. And here's the thing: I, I feel like I feel like when I wake up tomorrow, if I've already crushed a day, mm-hmm. then I'm yeah. going for another day. There's a Bible. I'm not. I'm not super religious. There's a Bible verse that's like, "Don't worry. Don't worry about. Uh, don't worry about today. For tomorrow will take care of itself, or something like that." That's mm. I'm paraphrasing, mm-hmm. but like it's really interesting. But yeah, it's totally true. It yeah. is. It, that's or don't worry. About, sorry, don't, just worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. Yeah, yeah. that's what. It's Which is true because yeah. once you start thinking about things ahead, that's when you're you're already kind of checking out, and you're already kind of checking out. With, same with special forces training or a lot of things a lot of things physical in nature i just did uh in august i ran the leadville 100 which oh, 100 oh my god wait no, way. no I, yeah. you did that i did it that's Jeez. amazing yeah, yeah it was really one of the hardest things i've ever done yeah. is that all this in training. um arizona is it's that in colorado the, it's in the highest city yeah. in oh okay yeah, yeah. So what's the elevation Ten thousand two hundred yeah. feet is where you start. Hundred miles. Hundred miles. Yeah, it's like it's the one real of deal. those. Uh, start at ten two. Ultra go up to twelve yeah. seven or Whoa. something. And then ultra runs. Yep. Yeah. And then you go down the back side of the mountain. Then you go back up the mountain and then. Damn. Yeah, it's a hundred miles. Was that your first brutal. ultra? First ultra. First hundred. I did my first ultra twenty twenty one fifty two k so thirty two point three miles, and that was pretty brutal. I had no idea what That's I was walking I, into. What are you thinking? But I'm thinking why even bring that up? This guy does but a hundred miles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an ultra, an ultra, that is an ultra. Like, and the elevation alone. <laughs> I'll be honest. I would st- if I had to, to do if you like run a marathon on pavement twenty six miles yeah. or do another ultra in the trails. I'd take that. Well, it makes sense. Well, I know you, it's you're hard. a special operator. You literally ran boots with a <laughs> sack on your back that had but like 65 the, pounds on the it. Flat on the pavement sure. with no terrain. I mean, nothing to look at except, I guess, houses and cars versus like in the mountains. Actually, and I take it back cool. what I said. I expect nothing less from you. <laughs> that is what you used to do. Like you would do miles at a time with a rucksack on and your boots. I didn't have a ruck. That was all the, yeah, the silver linings were no ruck, but also. To talk to, you know, to get back on, on that point was yeah. if I at any moment started sure. the moment I started thinking about, oh, I'm only on mile yeah. 11 and I'm already like breathing like this. You know, I had to just like reset, yeah. focus on something else, you know, sing a song in my head yeah. or, you know, just take in the beauty of being out here. Or if I saw that big ass mountain 25 oh, miles yeah. in the distance that I know I have to cross and come back and I start staring at that mountain and worrying about it instead of just like looking right in front of my so feet true. you know when I, if I stayed right here in my little zone and enjoyed the beauty around mm-hmm. me right now and just kept going eventually I was halfway and then yeah I like, now I'm past halfway still sucks but for sure I'm gonna finish I wow this, what he said know. was fucking just awesome right there yeah it's life that's life, man. Look down, have your little zone, and just keep moving forward. And you're gonna get where you need to go. Yeah, that's really nice. It's quicker. I mean, anybody that's hiked, yeah, you know, and you like go For up, sure. and then you look back down, yes. and you're like, damn, yeah, yeah, we yeah, went yeah. really far away. It didn't feel like that because yeah. I'm talking with my friend, and totally. we're just on a hike. But you're just like, you know, look, you know, like when you, you go to Runyon Canyon and do sure. it, and you look like downtown LA is way over there. The ocean's way over there. You're like, wow, that's far. You know? But it is amazing in the sense of like, that's why the mind is the most powerful tool because your mind can take you in or take you out. Mm. And that, and just like a blink of an eye, you know, you could be super physically fit, but if you're focusing on the mountain, that's 25 miles ahead, like you were saying, 
all of a sudden those little negative voices start being like you're good or in your case you could be like i'm a bad motherfucker i'm a green beret i can fa- i don't need to do this yeah what do you got for prove? me like this is whatever i'm c- i'm good you know like those little voices can start trickling in but when they do they do oh for sure <laughs> i don't care how accomplished you yeah, are those voices never go away yeah yeah you know they're always I like no mine always wanted this. that's what i always say i was like Mind that bitch wakes up every day, like already doing push ups, ready to take my ass out. You, you know what I do though? I think about this girl Mandy that we had oh, on right. our podcast. She 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 had uh she has no legs. She um got them chopped off on a on a train accident. Yeah. They were Somebody chopped off, they were kinda cut off. Cut off. And um someone put her there. She's she has climbed uh Kilimanjaro, yeah. Mount wow. Kilimanjaro. Yeah. I've done it too, but I have two. Wow. Legs, so cheating. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so amazing. You know what I mean? So you've done oh, that. Yeah, I've done. So it. So you yeah, know I've what she's. It. You know. I've seen. I've done it three times. Wow. And twice, two or three. Actually, yeah, all three times with somebody with an amputation, but double is another. That's another level. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, and and anybody with a single amputation will say that. Like you know, especially like there's. The, Below the knee and then above the knee. Hers are both above the knee. That's insane. Yeah. She That's insane. she she uh basically climbs up them with with her hands. She, you know, she got she Ugh. got her gloves, all Ooh. that. Unreal. She's yeah. done uh Col- Colorado. Yeah. Um, some crazy place in Colorado, Kilimanjaro. Uh, yeah, she probably incredible. did Pikes Peak or one of the big fourteeners in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. Kilimanjaro is nineteen thousand feet though. That's, That's up there. Mm-hmm. Like nineteen and change, like that's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, just really to, cool to to have her on, and then you know, just to have that perspective of every time I start to feel like I can't do something. Yeah, it's like come on, dude. No, it's it's huge. It's mm-hmm. huge, and it's like it's interesting when you talk to a lot of those people. Which maybe she mentioned this, maybe she didn't, but a lot of them who've been through something like that and have this huge, you know, physical impairment they have to get over. They're like, oh, I've done way tougher stuff since I lost my legs than yeah. before, yeah. which is crazy. But it yeah. just shows the power of the mind. Right. Like, I survived this. I'm still here. Like, what are these things that I don't even think I can do? Let me just go try. Right. You know? And then they do. It. It's wild. But uh, I had a uh, an acting teacher that to speak on the voice in, in your head. Oh, yeah. That, you know, he would say, um, you know, just remember that you're not the voice in your head. You're just the one that listens to it. Mm. So like it, it is always there. It's never going away, but it's not you. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but it's not you. Mm-hmm. You, you. You can listen to it if you want, you know, yeah. sometimes okay. I do. And it just motivates me because I'm just sure. like, it's talking shit. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, uh, I talk fine. shit back to it. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm just like, do. you know, I'll be like, too. fuck <laughs> you, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, I, I ain't do. that fucking dude. I don't know who you're talking yeah. to right now. Yeah. You know, that's good. Yeah. Calling me a fucking pussy. Yeah, exactly. Loser octopuses. Yeah, exactly. octopuses. For the just to go back on it because I think it's amazing in the sense of in the ultra space, like a hundred miles. Did you train for that, or did you just decide, you know what, I'm gonna sign up for this? I mean, kind of. So I did my first marathon in twenty, uh, twenty, twenty, twenty one. Sorry, and twenty one, and I ran it by myself. It wasn't like part of an actual yeah, marathon. I just right, ran just the ran, distance. Yeah. And then I did it again in 22. And after the one in 22, I went and uh, did the, f- uh, it's actually the Griffith Park 50K. So it's okay. like 31. Yeah, 32.3. Yeah, yeah. Or fi- no, no, 50K it was would less. be like, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. It was like 31.1, something like that. I did that and I was way less sore from that, even though it was a little bit further and up and down the mountains yeah. because you're breaking it up. Like you're on the steep stuff, you're not running, you know, right. you're just walking. And then it's just different. I think it was better on my body to just mix that up. Yeah. Different muscle groups and everything. And so then I was, I had my sights set on Leadville that year, last year. And I ended up booking this, uh, I hosted this Discovery Channel series that was like a survival type show. And so I couldn't go. And I kind of stopped running altogether. Mm-hmm. I mean, not altogether, but, but yeah. nothing long. I was just like, ah, short runs. And then I got asked just in, uh, in May, like late May, uh, uh, to go on this uh, trip, just this, this uh, it's called the Yomp. It's in Scotland. It's 54 miles mm. through the Highlands. It's gorgeous. And it's all pretty much all veterans. It's, it, the um, 
Allied Forces Foundation is who I went out there with. And I, <laughs> the day I found out I was going is like two weeks away. I hadn't been running. I went outside, I went out and ran like, I did like a 13 mile trail run. And I just was, and it was hot. It was in Austin, you know, and mm -hmm, I was just mm -hmm. like soaked, just <laughs> dead. And I was like, damn, well, I already said yes. Yeah, so whatever, I'm just going to yeah. go. So then I started kind of tapering down from the 13 miles. Mm -hmm. But then I went out there and I crushed it because um, I just, the, like the spirit of what we were doing sure. and it was so gorgeous and I just kept going and I felt great. And I did it. I did the 54 miles in like 11 hours, which is pretty good. Wow. And I got done, and uh, and then I when I got back home, I hit up the people at Leadville again because I had a slot the year before, but yeah. I didn't have one this year. And I was like, "Hey, is there any way? I know yeah. you're not supposed to, but mm -hmm. can't you know?" And they were like, "We got you." That's awesome. So then I went out and did that. But that's freaking incredible. It was cool. So it yeah. kind of happened quick. Yeah. You know? My yeah. parents. It was cool. My parents came out. Oh, nice. And like helped crew me and three of my good buddies, Matt, uh, Mitch, and Corey, came out and paced me for the last yeah. bit you could have a pacer you know? yep so that's awesome but it was good that's really cool yeah so uh i well, just want i just want to scroll back uh to combat okay um how many tours did you do i did uh three combat tours i went to iraq once and afghanistan twice and i went some other places but they were more like you know training missions yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> it's a little yeah, bit different, yeah, but it's yeah. not, if, you know, or not, it's not a combat deployment. So, uh, well, <laughs> I'm like, what is a training? Not, I mean, it's mostly training. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. And so, then is that what you have to say? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to I'm say like, anything. <laughs> say whatever I want. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> um. So then you're in doing that for how long? Um. For like on when I go on deployment? No, just your entire time in the military. Oh, got you. So from, um, I was like, I guess five years in the special forces on active duty. Yeah. And then I transitioned into the Texas National Guard in 2011. Mm -hmm. And from 11 to 15, I was in the guard. And that's when I was going to college at Texas and, and you know. Playing ball. Playing football, yeah. Yeah, so when did you decide, you know what? Mm, I'm gonna go back to college and then I've never played football and I'm gonna go try and play now yeah I was actually in Iraq when I made the decision I had a year left on my enlistment and at, when you're a year out you can re-enlist and you get you know they had bonuses at the time and it was pretty good money especially if you're in the army it was really good money mm -hmm. and uh, I was up for re-enlistment and when you're deployed too if you re-enlist in a combat zone you don't pay any taxes. <laughs> mm. So it was like all these reasons of like why I should reenlist. But at the same time, um, at least in Iraq at the time, things were winding down a bit. And about halfway through our deployment, things had shifted into more of like train, advise and assist versus going on uh, some, you know, some of the combat operations. And yeah. we were still doing it, but it was, it was less. And then there was like, we were trying to hand over um, provincial control to the, the governors and local government, which is hard because it's very corrupt and it's just not an easy situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, Afghanistan, the way that that ended as well, similar, like with Iraq, it was ISIS, you know, and then, um, you know, with Afghanistan, like, you know, the Taliban coming back into power and just like, it's frustrating. You know, we do everything that we can. I want, to, first of all, everybody that did serve in those places to just appreciate what you attempted to do and don't like, a lot of a lot of us look at it as like a waste of time and lives. Yeah, and I don't see it that way. I think, you know, you go out and play a game. And I know this isn't a game, but you go play a game, and if you don't win, it's not a waste if you gave everything you had. You know what I mean? Like that is there's still value in that. And if you went, if if your intention was going over there and <clears throat> doing everything you could to provide that freedom and opportunity for those people. And you did what you could, you know, and you, there's so little you can control there and you can yeah. be angry about it and all that. And you have every right to be, but at the end of the day, like, don't be angry about it. Well, for, don't, for, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. You know what From I mean? yeah. 2001 to 2021, 2021, yeah, 20 years. Uh, wow. America was a, 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 I felt, I felt pretty safe. Yeah. Uh, in this country. 
I don't, I don't know that I feel that way so much now because is there so much uncertainty in 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 that part of the world now? Yeah, I mean different threats, different. I mean you look at some of the superpowers, you know, other countries. Like yeah, now I feel that. I feel that for sure. Um, um, but with that said, I still feel it, pretty confident in our military. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, sure. I, I do. Like no matter who's in charge and all that like there's so many checks and balances that i'm grateful for you know um but yeah we're definitely not perfect yeah. let me ask you a question <laughs> uh it hasn't it, it's that's a hypothetical question but the, this podcast was started um because on uh september 11th of 2022 just kind of you know ironic um my 21 year old daughter found her the love of her life her fiance i always say uh, her husband my son-in-law because he was like a son to me uh she found him dead in his bed from fentanyl mm. and uh that's um what birthed this podcast because i was no longer gonna sit around and be uh silent about this fentanyl deadly deadly uh epidemic that we have crisis going on here in in america um i think it's way worse than uh than the hype behind covid 300 people are dying every single day from uh, fentanyl um, that's a large airplane going down every single day we know the fact that it comes from china uh at least the precursors all come from china and then they and then it uh goes to the cartels in mexico and then it comes across the border hypothetically because i have this like you know um i hate fentanyl you know I hate what it's doing to to families uh, in America right now. But hypothetically, how many green berets would we have to send down to the border to annihilate the fucking cartels? Oof, I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> I, I also don't know how deep those car the cartels run and like the sheer sheer numbers. But I know they're 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 scary. I mean, that's no they're no yeah. joke. You know what I mean? And everybody. Uh, you know, in that part of the world, it, you know, fear, well, I mean, maybe not everybody, but most people fear them. That's why most people join them, I think, mm -hmm. out of, you know, fear, fear. or yeah. they have no choice. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. But I, but I our military it, compared to the cartel. For sure. Could crush them in a, but the, a shorter it's, amount it's of time. It's also hard when you are fighting people that don't really value life yeah. in the same way. That's, you know yeah. what I mean? That's the problem. Yeah. That's, That's scary. That's scary. I mean, they thing. obviously don't value life because they're, they're pressing pills that are poison. Totally. They're, it's yeah. not like, look, like, look, I get it. Like go back to drug sales. You want drug sales, man. Just please bring heroin back because only a fraction of people were dying from heroin. Right. And I don't like saying that at all no, because, no, I, I understand but what you're saying though, but, you know, I've been in this industry for uh, 22 years, and um, the last four years I have seen um, death in numbers that are just insane, right. including, you know, somebody very close to, to me and my family. Right. And um, so that's why this podcast exists. I always have this fantasy in my head we could send down the military. And take I mean, we problem. probably could. We, we could. We could. Um. I'm not sure <clears throat> all the politics and reasons why we don't haven't or don't, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like I, I equate that type of, I mean, anybody that's cutting head, people's heads off and videotaping yeah. it, that's just totally. pure evil. And that, you know, that, and, and terrorist organizations, certain terrorist organizations do that and cartels do that, you know, mm -hmm. and that's like. We don't call them like terrorist organizations, the cartels, do we? Or do we? I don't. I don't know. No. I've never heard it called that, but they do that. They'll cut somebody's head off, send yeah. it, yeah. send, send oh, it home yeah. in a box. Yeah. They'll do. Some. Oh, and they videotape. It's like yeah. out there. It's crazy that you can like, I mean, don't look it up. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, I'm like, not going to look like, it but up. You, but right. it's a thing, you know? It's like, it's wild. we got to deploy the army to a fucking United States here, but we've got enough problems here, really. Look <laughs> at people burning flags left and fucking right lately. It's fucking killing me. <laughs> Can't stand it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll say this hot take on that though. Uh, I fought for the right to do that. Right, right. You know, I don't have to like it, but I did. Yeah. Like we all, you know, that that freedom that we do have that freedom. Yeah. Here, and, you know, but I hear you. I trust me. I don't like. I, I, it hurts me every time something like that happens. Yeah. But that that to me is a different. 
That's a yeah. different type of freedom. It's, it's, just like they're talking about I know, free speech. But it's not I a, they're speech, not cutting anybody's head. But you're talking yeah. hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, right. You know? Right. Not in this I know. We're not just not burning cities country. down. We're yeah. just burning cities yeah. down. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's always a, there's a, there's definitely a line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I, you know, I just, they, 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 I mean, they shut the fucking country down for COVID. Shut it down. Right? Um, if an airplane started crashing every single day, a large jumbo de- jet, right? That's 300 people. The large jumbo jet started crashing every day. How many days do you think it would be before they shut down all air travel? Three? Two. Two? Yeah, probably two. Two planes crashed in the United probably States back-to-back in back-to-back, days. back-to-back yeah. days? Probably. They'd shut it down? I mean, I wouldn't get on an airplane if if they went down back-to-back days, right? So we, we, we as citizens would probably shut it down. I probably would. Risk it. Not smartly, but I'm just like, the airport, <laughs> nobody there. <laughs> Dude, I flew. I, I flew, I flew during enough. COVID. I was back the in day, WWE. The and day I, of? I, I literally flew Empty. all of 2021. Like, it was the best. There was no, it was ghost town. It was great. There, I had, yeah, I damn near threw, flew private because there was nobody on well, the, the I, plane. I was in LA, I, I think it was March 15th when the, the when lockdown I, was ordered. Yeah. And they ordered it that morning. And I went online, booked a flight. My folks were... Um, on their way to Oregon. My dad grew up in Southern Oregon, so he was drive. They were driving from the Bay Area because they still lived there at the time. And uh, I just booked a flight that night. I was like, "Oh, there's not gonna be any flights available." It was like seventy bucks, and then I get to the airport. There's like six people on the flight. I'm like, "This is great." Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was uh, it was like 2021 to travel during that that time. I mean, I was, was it was amazing. great for me too because like I was I was like one of the only people we this is a we we were an industry that had to stay open, right? And yeah. So I'm the guy going to the grocery store, picking up all the supplies for all for all the treatment centers and I was like, "Man, this is great. There wasn't a cop in sight for yeah. two fucking months. Not one cop. I was just cruising around doing whatever the fuck I wanted. And I wasn't doing anything wrong, but like yeah. I was driving it was, fast. It was like odd. Yeah, it was just super it was nice. weird. It was a weird. I uh, we shot the movie that during COVID. We'll talk about, it, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, during COVID, and that's the only reason we made it for the price we made it sure. at. And got the people we got sure. in it. Yeah. Because they were just like, I want to work on well, something. I want to do something. Yeah. Please. So yeah, let's go there. Let's go to the end of your military career. You're in Iraq. Uh, what yeah. decision did you make? And then so, let's go through the college because yeah. the yeah. movie's the movie. a big deal yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had that that oppor- that opportunity to reenlist, and you know, of course, I thought about it, but at the same time, I originally, when I went to sign up, I, the plan was just do five years and get out. It wasn't to do a career, you know, and and so now at that point, I was twenty seven, turning twenty eight, uh, on that deployment. And uh, uh, I guess at this time, by the time I made that decision, I was already 28. It was in my last few months of that rotation. And uh, I just, to help me get through um, some of the tougher parts of that deployment, like we lost somebody very early on. And, you know, there was just, it was just, it was, a, it was hard. And uh, football season, though, was something that took me away mm-hmm. from, uh, all that stuff. Like I just would watch every game I could on the Armed Forces Network, and you know, we're watching Monday Night Football games at like 5 a.m. because the time difference. And uh, I would get back from a mission. And we were out all night, and I would stay up and watch the game and like unwind. You know what I mean? And uh, and I just remember thinking, like, man, like how you know how cool would that be if I was able to you know get back home and then <clears throat> maybe go walk on to a football team somewhere you know and uh my good buddy brad uh, brad keys who unfortunately passed away uh december 13th 2012 so just recently was the 11th 11 years Mm -hmm. um but this was back in 2009 uh brad i remember telling he was the first person i told we would you know we'd be up uh, uh up on the rooftop of our compound, like with a little fire pit going and just, you just talk, you know, mm-hmm. get to know these people really well. And Brad asked like what I wanted to do when I got out. And I told him like, I kind of want to go try and play college football. And he was just like, oh, really? And he's like, what'd you play in high school? And I was like, I didn't play in high school. Like, oh, crazy. Um, but he also knew I was like a dreamer and a motivated person. And so 
I had, you know, I was, I was telling him this and I started practicing, like training for it over there. I was trying to put weight on and then I started, you know, trying to teach myself how to backpedal in case I was a DB or run routes in case I was a receiver. Uh, and, you know, I told Brad, I was like, I, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go, but you know, probably a small school or something like that. And he was like, no, dude, if you go, you got to try, you got to go to a big school. You got to go, you got to just, you're going to regret it if you mm -hmm. don't. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you're right. Uh, and I was like, you know what? If I go to a school in a place that I'm going to enjoy, even if I don't make the team, I'm still, it's going to be good for me, something different. And so I picked, um, I picked Austin because Austin's a really fun town. And this is before it really blew up. Mm -hmm. It was very different yeah. in 2010 when I ended up going there. Um, but, uh, and it's, UT is a really good school. And, the, you know, with the GI Bill, it's, your college is paid for and all that. So I was like, all right, well, I started taking community college classes, you know, and, and just kind of made this plan of this, what I was going to do. Cause I had to transfer in because my high school grades were not good. So I was not going to get in <laughs> on that merit. <laughs> so I started doing that and we had one more trip. We had a training mission in Israel, uh, in 2009. So I was over in Israel when I found out my mom got the letter in the mail and she like emailed me and she's like, Hey, you got in wow. school starts in three months. Nice. Wow. So nice. yeah. yeah. So then I got out <clears throat> and went to college and like the first day of school was spring tryouts for football too. So I just kind of <laughs> went right into it and, uh, didn't really know what I was doing. Luckily That's the tryout hilarious. was all conditioning. So we didn't have to have pads. So if the fact that I hadn't played before didn't really show. I was yeah. in good condition from the army. Yeah. I could go all day, yeah. you know, and they're like, well, this guy, he'll at least be a good scout team player, you know, because sure. he's got the military background and he's in really good condition and he won't complain and he won't get tired. And, and little did they know I would complain and I will get tired. <laughs> I'll still do it, yeah. but you know, I'll just bitch yeah. about it while I do it. <laughs> um, and so I made the, you know, made the team and then we get to like practices and we're putting pads on and I'm like, I'm watching the kids in the locker room put their pads on first so I don't oh put them God, on wrong. Oh my God, this is hilarious. Like, these like, kind this of things. This is insane. Yeah, like real stuff. Yeah. It was funny. It was, it was, <laughs> it was interesting because I didn't let anybody know that I never played. Smart. You know, I figured if I, if that got around, they might it be like. It would spread mm -hmm. like wildfire and they'd be like, nah, I yeah. don't know. This guy hasn't even uh, suited yeah. up ever. Yeah. You don't even know where your pads go. Exactly. I mean, I knew they were on my shoulders. I was just like, I don't want to do it wrong. Yeah. And then I saw, oh, they put the jersey on the pads first because it's too tight. You can't just like put your pads on yeah. and pull your jersey over. So I was like, oh, okay. I just, you know, sit back and watch them do it and, and then just do pretended it. pretended like that you is were do, crazy. Yeah. doing something else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Tying, exactly. Tying your shoe. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, they, you know, and, and uh, you're supposed to try out at a place like Texas. Typically, you have to have film from when you played in high school. Yeah. And then you have a recommendation sure. letter from your high school coach and all this stuff. And even then, that's just to get a tryout. Mm -hmm. you know, just to, but for me, because I was coming out of the military, you know, they asked me. I was just very vague uh, with my answers. <laughs> I didn't yeah. lie. Yeah. Kind of. You know, I was yeah. like, they were like, did you or do you have, a, you know, film from when you, you know, in high school? And I was like, uh, you know, I, I don't. I mean, I went to high school in the late nineties, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. You know what? Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, good. Totally. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> because I actually don't have fun. <laughs> did they know you um, were like, uh, I never played. They did. Uh, some of the, the strength coach did because he asked me, he would ask me like, what, what all did you do? And then I wouldn't tell anybody unless they asked, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, obviously I look older. So that I got that question in class and other places sure. too. You know, it's just like, I mean, I went to frat parties at 30. I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I go there and people are like, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm 30. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. You're like, like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm a freshman. What do you mean? Or I'm a sophomore, you know? Oh you my know? God. That's so wild. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And so then you played, did you play all four years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. The first year I was just on the practice or the Stop. scout So team. you graduated on a college football team at what age? Uh, I finished my... I actually got, I got my master's, finished wow. my master's at 33. Good for you. 33. That's yeah. in. That was my insane. senior year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you played that year? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I played, uh, I played, I started my sophomore, junior and senior year. The first year so I was wild. just on the scout team and I got to, on veterans day, we were playing uh, Texas tech and they were really bad that year. So we we're blowing them out. So they put me out to like run down on kickoff, kind of like Rudy, you know, just yep. like throw them in the game yep. at the end of the game. 
Um, so I did that. But then after that game, I was like, I got to find something away on the field. Yeah. yeah, yeah so I started yeah, yeah. long snap. I'd never long snap before. I was 31 when I started long snapping, but I just started messing with it. And after a couple months, uh, honestly, I got addicted to it, you know, because I was like, this will be my way. And, and yeah. it was like, it's a healthy addiction, but I was like, yep. 100 snaps a day. I'm going to just do 100 long snaps a day. And I'm not going to judge myself on it for a, a few weeks. Cause I know I'm going to suck for a while. Cause everything, anything new you try, you're just going to suck yeah. for a while. You just have to like get through the sucky part, you know? Mm -hmm. And I started to get, uh, uh, some velocity on it. And then I started to figure out a spiral and then I started to get a little bit accurate. And then I, I felt good enough about it that I told the coach, you know, like, Hey, I want to try out for this next season. And our, yeah. that's cool. And I actually went, so, cause I reenlisted in the guard. I would go overseas in the summer. So they, I went to Afghanistan between like my sophomore, junior, and my junior, senior year. And so when I went over there, before I left, I'm like, all right, they're all wishing me well, wishing me off to Afghanistan. I was like, coach, don't forget, when I come back, I want to try out for the long snapping position, you know? And he's like, well, have you ever long snapped before? And I was like, coach, I didn't play football before I got here, but like, I made the team, so you gotta let me try. And he's yeah. like, all right, all right, be safe over there, take That's care of yourself. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. But when you come back, you can yeah, you can try. You. And so I brought a couple balls with me and practiced any free time we had, you know, and then came back and, and won the job. That is so wild. It was cool. <laughs> I didn't even know what long snapping was before I left, honestly. But it's like, it's a thank, for those that don't know, it's a thankless job. You know, you're hiking yeah. it. so important. You know, it is important. It is very important. But you're, yeah, you're hiking it for the punter, the field goal, you know, yeah, which holder is huge, for field which goals. Which is like, it points. boils, if anybody's been watching football lately, there's been a lot of field goals that have been missed. Yeah. Um, and it comes down to winning a game or losing a game. So if your long snapper sucks or shits the bed, everyone not only is going to know who you are, but you also just cost your team the game. Yeah. It's. Oh, huge. yeah. You don't want your name in the paper. No. Unless you were in the military or. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. You so know, it's that's, a, that's the only reason, actually, because otherwise, if you do it perfect, nobody cares. Right. Of course. It's just expected because, you know, especially when it comes down to like a field goal or something, I think people automatic think they're automatic, but it's they're, it's not. No, it's hard. So that's incredible, especially starting. I mean, you guys to be playing at a collegiate level and not even playing it on a team as a kid or in <laughs> high school. And then here comes this dude, 28. Yeah, I mean, that alone. Talent is wild. only takes us so far. He already had the discipline and hard work, You're and that's ninety percent of the bullshit. Agree. It's true. You know it what is. I'm saying? It is. Like look he, at he, look he at the old so work true. anyone on yeah. that fucking field. Yeah. And that's what I share with anybody that I talk to. You don't have to be the best, but you can definitely be the best shape. Even guys that make it to the NFL and have long careers, if yeah. you look at the, if you take all the data and look yeah. at it, it's mostly undrafted yeah. or late round picks. Yeah. It is not these first rounders. Yeah. Look at Tom rounders. Brady, like, perfect yeah. example. Yeah. There's so many. Sixth yeah. round, Hall of Seventh Famers. round. Yeah. He was yeah. sixth round. Six. At the end of the sixth round. Yeah, yeah he's the like new. 99. I'm a Niner fan right now. Brock Purdy might. Be oh my God! Yeah. Totally. He's the last pick in the draft. I know. Yeah. The very last. And it's very falling out. Mr. Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, he's very yeah. last sure. pick. You know. So and he's balling. So damn, you made it through college. Long snap. I recall. Uh, I'll tell you what would have been nice. I'm sorry if they would have won a championship, bro. Could you imagine what the rain? We're about to win one this year. I bro. know, but can you imagine <laughs> coming on as this and having you know a rain to boot? I, I that would be cool. That but would be cool. I will say that, like, the more I look back on things, yeah. like I am, gr I'm, I'm actually oh, kind, for sure. I'm not grateful that we weren't good at the time, yeah. but I think it was better for for me in a lot of ways, sure. honestly, because. I had to take on a different type of leadership role in certain yeah. ways and it was it challenged me. You know, I remember like the first or second year I was there we were you know, we had a losing record and there's these alumni who were part of the national championship team that were pissed, you know, mm. and call, you know, calling out and I had to like step these kids aren't going to, you know, say something to these guys, but I had to like step up and kind of say like, "Hey, you know, I mean, you don't think these guys are trying, you know what I mean? Yeah. Things aren't going well, of course, you know, and the, yeah, people are upset with each other in the locker room, of course, all of that. But like what you're doing is not helping, Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you just talking and that's not helping and mm -hmm. talking bad about mm -hmm. these people. They're, they're, they're young men, but they're still men and they don't want to, you know, they're embarrassed. Like yeah. they're not excited about this. They're not quitting. So like, why are you quitting on them? You yeah. Know? And I had to do that. 
if we were winning, I wouldn't have to do that. It just would have been no issue, you know. Yeah. But so I think it was it would be good. And not that I want Texas to lose ever, but like yeah. it was good for me in the moment. No. And then I got cut from this. I had a chance with the Seahawks. Yeah, I got, I got yeah. cut. I failed, you know. I mean, ultimately. but you had a chance. But I had a chance, yeah. But I was better that I got. I, I, it was good that I got cut. How did you even get the chance, out. though? How did you get the chance? To, uh, not everybody gets yeah. to try out for the Seahawks. No. No, I, I had. Uh, I mean, I, I did a good job at Texas. That was part of it. So I, I got asked to play in a senior all star game. Uh, in, it was actually played at the Citadel, which was really interesting, in, in Charleston, South Carolina. It's old, uh, you know, military college, and it was one of the small. There's a big. There's like the where the first and second rounders all play in the Senior Bowl, and then there's these other two or three other All Star games that are not as you know, not the talent isn't as is high, but, um, but it's still an opportunity to get in front of scouts and you know front office folks because they come to every practice. So I was out there at you know I just turned 34, and I was like, well, no one's gonna look at me. Like I, I'm not a big guy. Uh, I mean, I weighed, uh, at the time, I probably weighed 20 pounds more than I do now, but still, not not what they're looking for. And I had four different teams meet with me and said, look, you know, you need to put some weight on, but even though you're a little bit older for your position, you know, you're a good snapper, you should just, you should go for it. You know, it's, you're going to be a long shot either way, but, you know, they're like, I would if I were you. And having more than one person tell you something like that, you know, you should, Mm -hmm. maybe listen to it and yeah. and it's not like I didn't want to try I just thought it was I thought it was futile I was like I'm not I, I have a lot of other stuff I want to do at this point so I'm going to move on with my life but it was like when they were telling me that I'm like I mean why not yeah so I put on like 30 pounds in four months wow. <laughs> it was not all good weight yeah. I did not look <clears throat> it's you, you there's old pictures of me you know and I'm just uh filling out my uniform in a different way um, but I had to, cause the NFL rules are a little bit different on snapping. Like you, you have to block. So now right. it's just a different dynamic. And you, I had to turn into a lineman, you know, <laughs> from someone that would just snap it and then just run down the field and try to make a tackle. Now I'm like blocking a, yeah. you know, like a 300 pound guy on the other side of me and trying to prevent him from blocking the kick. And, uh, so I did that. And then the draft rolled around. I knew I wasn't going to get drafted, but I was just hoping at the end some team would call and want to sign me as a free agent. And I got, uh, the Rams were still in St. Louis at the time. The St. Louis Rams were four and 12 the year before. And no offense to St. Louis, but I wasn't super keen on going to St. Yeah. Louis. And the other phone call I got was from the Seahawks who'd been to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. They won the first Crazy. one. And that roster was like Marshawn Lynch, totally. and Richard Sherman and Russell Wilson and, you know, Jimmy Graham, like so many superstars. It was just like, yeah, so it was, it was very cool. Team. Yeah. It was a great team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I called my, I called my dad. I talked to my agent. I talked to, to Jay Glazer. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were all, well, my agent was like, hey, you probably have a better chance of making the team with the Rams, but you never know what's going to happen. He, he was like, for your future, maybe the Seattle makes more sense. And both Jay and my dad were like, I mean, come on you, you got to go to Seattle. Like, you, you know, and then I thought about Brad, I thought about my buddy that passed and it was like the same conversation yep. I had with him yep. and no offense to the Rams. You know, they went on and they just won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So good for them. But at the time it made, you know, it, it made less sense for me to do that. And I think I would have always wondered what mm -hmm. if, if mm -hmm. I wouldn't, didn't go for the big fish. Yeah. Know? So I went to, so I signed with the Seahawk. Pete Carroll called and, and, you oh, know, offered me the position. It was cool. And was like, Hey, like, he didn't offer me the position. He offered yeah. me the opportunity yes. to try out, you know, but he was like, you know, I don't know how long you'll last or if you will at all or whatever. I'm just being honest. He's like, but, you know, I, I'll tell you this. I love guys with a chip on their shoulder and I know you have that. And my roster is full of that, you know, so, you know, we'd like to give you a shot. So I went up there and, you know, what I thought was going to be like five days turned into five months and wow. uh, played got through training camp and played in I got to play in one preseason game um against the Broncos and it was Peyton Manning's last year that's they went so on to win the wild. Super Bowl so I got to play against it was just really cool and then I got cut but that's <laughs> <all right. laughs> it was but like, that's incredible yeah. but that's just one of those things like man what happened you missed the snap no I actually played great it's just the <laughs> next round of cuts that next week they went from you know, 70 something players yeah. down to 50 something. And it's like, you don't have two long snappers on the team. And the guy what happened ahead of me was, was uh, hurt. 
then somebody they else could, on the team does it until until they call somebody yeah. in on Monday. They'll call somebody in, yeah, if somebody's hurt. So, um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, the coolest part about that to, to talk about what you sort of touched on was um, before the game. So in college, I they'd have me run out of the tunnel with the American flag and like lead the team out every Sick. game, which was really cool. Yeah. And you know, in Texas. Texas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and then they'd have two Texas flags, of course, of right, course. right behind it, Sick. you know, Sick. Uh, I mean, it gives me chills just like, yeah, uh, it's cool. Awesome. You're running out of the, f- totally. the smoke, you know, and onto the and field. And just like crowd. It's and everyone's 2000 people out yeah. there. It's nuts. And then, uh, by the way, if you guys haven't, you and your husband have to go to a game. For sure. You know, you yeah. gotta go to a Texas game. Yeah. You can get you on the field. It's awesome. I can. You can get yourself on the you field, just, honestly. You literally like, just like put him on the spot, but I'll take it. Yeah. No. You, <laughs> I feel like you so can, well you done. can navigate that no, on your own. No, it's okay. I'll, take, I'll, I'll let you take, navigate <laughs> and take the lead on that one. I'll, yeah. Me and my husband will we meet you up, up at the game. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good. That'd be amazing. All right. We'll make it happen. Okay. Um. So before the Seahawks game, they the equipment manager came up to me in the locker room and said, Hey, do you want to lead the team out of the tunnel with the flag? He's like, I, I noticed in college, I followed you and you used to do that. And I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Usually they have somebody in uniform, you know, active duty or a veteran that's down there that does that. And, um, he just asked me to do it for that. You know, maybe he knew I was getting cut in three days, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, yeah, sure. So I took it, you know, Grant, lead, lead the team out of the tunnel, which was awesome. I mean, that's sick right there. Yeah, to have just that. that. Experience. Oh, that was just the coolest like, part of the game. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, then we go to the sideline, and in college, you're still in the locker room when they play the anthem. But obviously, everybody knows now, if you didn't before, you know, during the NFL games, the teams are on the sideline. Mm-hmm. So they started playing the anthem, and uh, I was kind of thrown off because I wasn't expecting it because I didn't think about it. And so I was like, oh, dang, I got to find the, you know, the tallest yeah. flag in the building. And so I, I face it, put my hand on my heart, and they start playing the song. And I, it was all the emotions from the game. Oh, I, was up, yeah. I started bawling. I was oh. like crying my eyes out. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then it, the song ends, and like, I kind of like, you know, I've been trying to, I was kind of trying to hide it from sure. the rest of the team, but people saw. Yeah. And so then all those superstars – like came up to me and like hugged me and it wow. was just it was really cool moment. before the game even started <laughs> yeah. yeah it was cool i didn't play in the first half thank god because i'd have been a mess like you know i had time to collect myself yeah. and i played the whole second half and i did great but that guy was better than me that main retained his job and so he deserved it you know yeah. he's a better player that is the like best man plays an incredible story of what you can do if you just go ahead and have the balls and just give it a whirl try. And try just try yeah. And now you know, and look at how like you got to experience something like that. Like one, not only do people not even make it to the the big league, ever, right? But not only did you end up getting that opportunity, but then to experience just like the the camaraderie of a professional football te- team in the NFL, nuts, and then to run out representing the American flag, incredible. Yeah. Not playing the sport ever until you got out of the military at 28. Yeah, that's wild. Like that's why I'm like, dude, God is a G because you can do things beyond what you think that you can do. Like let your mind wander, let your mind dream some crazy shit. Because if you had told anybody else, which I'm sure it did happen, like, hey, I'm going into a uh, special forces selection. They'd look at you crazy. Well, look at you just did. I didn't tell too many people. Well, that's probably <laughs> same, smart. same with football. Like I just did because I, I was afraid. I was afraid, and I'm not really afraid about that now. I think it's important to say things so you're held accountable. You know, to sure. to speak it yeah. out there. But at the time, I was like, you know, what if I do quit, or what if I don't make it? That's or what if that that little talk of them being like, "Are you sure you want to?" You can yeah. let that kind of like creep in too. So I mean, it's your the the story is pretty phenomenal in the sense of what you were able to accomplish with not having your traditional, you know, especially in sports, you hear about people playing a specific sport when they were eight years old or four years old. And then that's the dream is to go into, you know, make it to the NBA, NFL, whatever it is professionally. And the fact that uh, you did none of that and actually went into the military and then 
uh, special forces selection and then into college at 28. It's just, it's just a, a cool testament in the sense of um, not putting not only an age limit on yourself because our first reactions were like, wait, what? You went to college at what? Um, immediately, you know, but you did it. And I think that's awesome, which I'm assuming segues into where it came about merging vets and players, right? Exactly. Yep. Merging players and vets. Which way you is had it? it right. Vets MVP. and players. MVP. That's the best way to remember it. MVP. 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 Merging totally vets and players. Which is right. funny because, yeah. because uh, you know, we, Have had, confidence. we, 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 we yeah. had a pro athlete on here uh, a, a while back, and I asked him, I said, I said, when did you know that you were going to make it in, in the NBA? You remember I asked that yeah, question? He said from the beginning he of said, time. He said, no, he said at 12. Yeah. At wow. 12, he knew he was going to play in the NBA. Because that's how good he was, and that's how much more right. talented and size wise that he was than everybody else. Uh, but you don't have to know that stuff, you know. It, it, our point of the Hopeaholics is to get people to get out of their comfort zone because you can't find happiness without progressing, right? Um, and and happiness comes from taking risks and challenge and challenging yourself and getting out of your comfort zone. Um, and you've done that over mm -hmm. and over. And that's why when you told your story that night, I was just, I was like, I was like st just stuck, just listening. And I, I could have, I could have heard another hour of it mm -hmm. because it was, uh, exactly what I believe in is, and, and you, these are transitions, life trans. As a young adult, you you go into the military, you you go straight into the spe special forces. You get out, you go try out, you go to college, you try out, you get in, you get an NFL tryout. Then what happened? <laughs> yeah, I mean, then then uh, I mean, honestly, so I was thirty. Yeah, I was thirty four. Um, you know, when that when football was over. I didn't know it was over right away, but yeah, you know, pretty much. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I still had a lot of dreams and goals and a definitely ambition, no shortage of ambition, but I didn't really know where to start, what I was going to do next. I thought for a split second about going back into the military and, uh, but I didn't, you know, I, I'd met Jay at Unbreakable Performance Center, Jay Glazer, and he'd helped me with that, you know, football journey from Texas to Seattle to get in that shot. Like he helped me, let me train at his gym and I mean, and, you know, introduced me to my agent and all, all this stuff. And, uh, so Jay sat down with me one day and was just like, look, like, I know you got a lot of things you want to do and you're, you know, and you should absolutely do those things, pursue those things. But, um, there's a lot of people from where I sit, like athletes that I'm speaking for Jay, a lot of people that lose that uniform, you know, get cut, get hurt. It's just over, mm -hmm. you know, and they're like 25 mm -hmm. and they feel like they've peaked and, you know, there's no hope and, uh, you know, that's it. And they don't think they can do anything else because they, they think, well, I did this since I was 12 or mm -hmm. eight or whatever. And it's all I'm good at, you know, and I know from being around that world, a lot of veterans think that way, especially those that join at a young, younger age than me, Right. you know, and not that I was doing anything great before I joined the military, but I at least had experience in the real world. Yeah. You know, I lived for four or five years on my own, doing my own thing, making my own mistakes, having to fix it yeah. on my own, you know? And so I had that going, but a lot of these, a lot of vets and a lot of athletes too, when you go straight into playing a college yep. sport and then the pros or straight into the military and overseas and all this stuff, there's just certain things you don't learn and you also, I think you sort of limit yourself in your head, which is no one's going to put more limitations on yourself than you, yeah. you know what I mean? But we do it and you just, you, you just think, well, I didn't, I didn't go to college for that or I didn't. So how can I, I, I you know, I don't know. Um, but the reality is like you can start things late. You can go, you can go to college yeah. at 29 or 89 and whatever you want to do. Um, but Jay was just like, look, I think what I want, he's like, what I want to do, what I'm passionate about is, is stories like yours and people like you and helping, um, these vets and athletes, 
um, find that same type of drive that they had before and that same type of passion for something else, you know, and maybe it's just being a good dad or, uh, you know, a good wife or whatever that is. It doesn't have to be professional, mm -hmm. you know, but just he's like, cause I see too many athletes that just, they go into the hole coaches too. They get right. fired and they just like, disappear, yeah. you know, and they just, and then the media and all yeah. this crap. And, and, and I knew from my experience, like military veterans feel the same way. And, you know, one thing I just was, I was nervous about was people thinking we're trying to make a comparison between going to war and sure. playing the game. And so we've always make that very clear. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about the locker room. Mm -hmm. yep. and like we talked about before, yeah. the structure and the uniform mm -hmm. and the identity and the camaraderie and like these things are very similar. And, and being typically it ending at a young age, you know, I mean, it, it always does. Even with the military, you might stay in the military for a long time, but you're not doing sure. the same thing you were doing when you were younger and healthier yeah. and stronger. Yeah. And like, just the way it is you go into a leadership role and mm -hmm. you're no longer in the fight you're no longer on the field you know and that's hard uh, but at the same time like remembering like for my own story like remembering who i was before i joined the military but then i did it i tried and i got through basic and i got and i still with all these doubts that i'll make it as a green beret but like i signed up for it i'm gonna try and yeah. then i made it and then football you know like a dream that went away from a teenager, but that didn't go away. But it, it, the, the, me actually believing that, I didn't really believe that was possible. And then I just was like, well, can I go? Like, yeah. and I looked it up and it's like, yeah. I mean, I can, I have eligibility. Like, you can go try, you know? And I was like, well, then why don't I just do that? And, you know, and people yeah. are like, you can't do that. I'm like, you actually can. You, know? <laughs> you just got to, just no one does. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I did, you know, with football and then now, trying to you know i'm doing it with like you know making movies circling back on that dream from when i was 19 and like all these things and they're not it's not perfect and not easy certainly not easy but it's possible you just have to you just have to try you just have to put yourself out there and not worry about the result because it's going to end in a failure probably and that's okay mm -hmm. you know you're going to get cut or something's going to happen and then you just pivot and find something else that makes you feel the same way you felt when you were overseas or you know were yeah. in the ring or whatever yeah. it is but it's uh, it, yeah it, it's all uh it's all there because when i look back on anything even the things i accomplished like finishing this 100 mile race yeah. i did a few months ago right like the finish line i vaguely remember what i remember is like the moments where it looked impossible mm -hmm. but i didn't quit and i yeah maybe i slowed down a lot sure. and i'm spitting everywhere <laughs> and uh Maybe I slowed down a lot and, and it, you know, felt like I wasn't going to be able to get to that peak, but then I just put my head back down and just kept going a few more steps. And then sooner or later you get up there and, and just the not quitting is the thing that I'm most proud of with mm -hmm. anything that I tried to do was just that I didn't quit when I wanted to, or felt like I maybe not wanted to, but I felt like I, <laughs> I had every right to, sure. you know, and no one would judge me, mm -hmm. but I would judge me. Mm hmm and I just didn't quit and just didn't. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's, I the, love that's that. the mindset. Like, yes. like this it. dude already fucking wrote a movie. Yeah. And it's like, and it's a made movie. Yeah. yeah anybody like, that's listening can actually go out and watch it right What is the name of the movie and, the, and, and where they come from? It's called MVP. And it's, so it's based on the genesis of the organization. It's not my story. It's not Jay's story. It's really about the vets and athletes who started our program and specifically you know, a, uh, a Marine who was living in a homeless shelter and a former NFL player, first year out of the league, who was living in a nice house in a nice neighborhood mm -hmm. with a family, you know, and black guy, white guy. On paper, you'd think, oh, they got nothing in common, you know, pro athlete and you know, Marine. Um, and then they meet each other and they start to, to, they don't like each other at first, but they soon realize that they are the same person. They're going through the same stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and that pain is relative. And, you know, we all have these, these that we all have that voice in our head. We all have like guilt and regret and like all these Demons. things. Yeah, all of us have it, you know. Um, and they kind of work through that together. But yeah, MVP is available on 
you know, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Showtime license. To, it's out there. You can't miss nice. it. Nice. You look up yeah. MVP. You can, uh, please do watch it. it I'm it, watching you know. tonight. Yeah, yeah, I got mine. I watched it on, yeah. on an empty stomach right. while I'm guzzling yeah. my water. Yeah, watch it. Or my Good. broth. But yeah. No, I'll be here. Never but mind. But that means... <laughs> To circle back on Stallone, yeah. like he put his name on it. That's if you awesome. look at his credits, yeah, yeah, MVP is this little, you know, very inexpensive movie uh, that doesn't feel like it because we had really great people helping really us. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate it. It was. It took me I, after the first cut and the first time I showed it, I was like, I didn't like it. I didn't think it. I thought I screwed it up. I wasn't sure. And then when I got to watch it with a group of vets and athletes, and some of them you know, grown men coming out, like crying. I was like, okay, yeah, you know, then I was like, all right, we did it. We, yeah. you know, we, it we has did a justice. whole other story because you know, it's, it, it, uh, the whole, we, you can make this a, as a whole, it doesn't matter. Like I could be, you know, uh, a Christian and he could be Jewish or Muslim, whatever it is. Totally. I could be rich. He could be poor or vice versa. Um, in any walk of life that we can all find something in the common theme is pain, mm. right? It's pain. It's suffering. It's these crazy things that we think about. It's the blocks. It's the demons, like she said. Um, I love that whole analogy. And the hard work to get the hard work to yeah. get out of it. Yeah. Because we can find com yes. a common theme. It's, hard work. it's actually... Uh, the more I think about it is actually what the 12 step programs are all about. Mm -hmm. There's a tradition in the 12 step programs and it doesn't matter what race, um, religion, political views, anything. Uh, we all are, we come together in a, in that community to help each other, um, you know, get through whatever they're going through. I mean, you just described the military, honestly, yeah. in a lot of ways, like the, the people that join the military, yeah. like we are, I say this all the time, like we're the most diverse microcosm in America. Totally. Like there is, man, all over the map. And people, I think, assume we all believe the same things or mm -hmm. think the same way, you know, because we are taught to, you know, when we have to go, we have to march in least in basic training, you know, we have yeah. to do those things. And like you, you, your uniform, everything looks the same. So they think everybody is the same. Mm -hmm. It's like not true at all. You know, we just, we sacrifice certain things and, um, you know, are willing to kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what the best word is, but just, I, I don't know, acclimate to the situation and, and, uh, and understand that like we're serving something bigger together. Right. So like, these are the things we have to do. Like these are the, this is the regiment we have to follow, you know, um, and, and the structure and all that. And I think that the disservice sometimes that, that, that system, um, promotes is that, they think they need all those same things when they get out, you know, and not understanding like you can take the discipline and the mm -hmm. sacrifice and the willingness to just outwork people and then get you don't have to keep doing that. Yeah. You know, the, all these other things that you thought you had to do. And when 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 society doesn't understand you getting frustrated and like, you know, it's not helpful you yeah. know? Or, or, or feeling entitled in any way because sure. veterans feel that sometimes, too. Sure. And that's not that's not that's not what it's all about. Um but I think, yeah, you uh, you definitely nailed it. That was the point of the movie. It wasn't for it wasn't just for vets and athletes. I wanted people to watch it to be like, oh, I I can totally relate to this person, you know, and the situation he's having, the trouble he's having at home with his daughter, you know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to do with it doesn't have to do with him getting cut. It's just yeah. It's other things, you know. Or the vet, like some of it was a lot of it's childhood trauma. A lot of vets, people yeah. that joined the military, we but they are have running the from trauma something. before, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's very common. Way before. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of the things that we have actually talk about at uh, some of the treatment centers is that, um, you know, some of the reasons why people go into the military is to escape their reality that's that that's at home. Right. Um, because it's a very, very unhealthy. Um, so the trauma we see uh, here that the trauma exists way before the military. Um, and, but then there's also the military trauma that uh, that that you guys see that you know, the average person doesn't see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was some, something else, but I can't remember. What but it I was. love it because so the movie and then your foundation is, I love it one because, and as the boys know, you know, my dad is 
a Marine, went to Vietnam, so he's he's a you veteran. Said is not was, so you know you've been taught. Yep. <laughs> um, yes, sir. Uh, so it's one of those things why I was so uh, grateful to be a part of WWE and going over. Like I went to Afghanistan to visit our troops, and and it's it's a real honor to be around you guys because it is something that you a lot of civilians take for granted because we're here being able to burn a flag or doing so situate doing things that you aren't realizing what these guys are doing overseas for us to be able to do that yeah. but then on top of that it's like okay merging players and vets is is something that i kind of see more as a broad scope because obviously you know we have treatment centers i work a 12-step program and it just goes to show like human beings they do thrive in structure and discipline when 12 steps works if you work the 12 steps and and do what yeah, is suggested the discipline of it. and then oh. applying the discipline into other aspects of your life the military works when you're doing that structure when you're a uh, an athlete a good one in in structure structure, structure. Discipline, discipline showing up That's having it. people rely yeah. on you and i think what happens for us all is when we feel lost or when we feel whether it's in your addiction or not because there's you know not everyone is an addict or an alcoholic but you lose a sense of purpose if something is you lose a job opportunity that you thought was your dream job or you got out of a relationship that you thought that was the one and it's not it just so happens that it's not so now all of a sudden you're left with all of these emotions and these feelings and, and you don't know what to do with that or what i saw in the movie what i see in really successful people is you have to find and you touched on it too with all of your transition stories you're searching for that purpose that was giving you that good feeling so you're basically searching for another drug right so it's like that's why i say doing this with you guys lights my soul on fire because i love it not only meeting people like yourself um, seeing people come in a mess and then all of a sudden they leave a completely other person, it gives them that hope, that discipline, that drive that they were lacking to begin with. So it's like, it's just encouraging. You need a glimmer of hope to get started. That's why I like the name of Hopeaholics, right? Hopeaholics. But hope isn't going to get you to where you need to go. After you got that little glimmer of hope, then comes the work and then comes the structure then comes the discipline of putting one foot in front of the other not looking at the mountain that's 25 miles ahead or else it's it looks like it's never <laughs> coming um and then being able to kind of dig yourself out of it and enjoying the process like you said which i loved because it is true once you get to that like high you really kind of uh, remember the moments that you were like damn i yeah. walked through the fire and I got through it. What do they say? What's the uh, how do you eat, how do you eat an elephant? One one bite at a time. One bite at a time. Yeah. I have <laughs> never heard that. You haven't. You have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, That's but good. I'm excited because the whole. Do we want to talk about the elephant in the room? You oh, hang on it. a second. I got. I got one. <laughs> wait, I want to say before before, wait, before you say your thing. No, I we're not say doing something. the thing yet. Hold on, but I want to say I'm excited because I definitely want us, uh, the hopeaholics. In some capacitation, working with your foundation. Oh, that's guaranteed happening. And it just as long as he's okay with it. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're all. I mean, we're <laughs> obviously. <laughs> like, we're we voted. He's like yeah, we hell voted. nah. We, voted. Like, we don't. Know. don't after this okay? podcast, <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. You know no. what? I, I want to talk cuckoo. about. I want to talk about these cargo pants. Are you talking about? Are you talking about Trinidad? Yeah. Yeah, Trinidad. Two and a, two and a quarter, so, bro. What's the code? So I need Trinidad, to get this half price. We need get some you, swag, we'll man. What the hell? Let's, let's go. Wait, All right. Wait a I'm a 34. So Trinidad Trinidad Garcia uh, is a Marine. Okay. He was in 2-7, um, stationed at Pendleton. And his last, he grew up um, sort of in the apparel industry. I think some of his family or cousins or something like that, right? And he was always like interested in it. But then he's, you know, he's in the military and doing the stuff and he had a family, has a family. And his last year in, he started going to fit him at the Fashion Institute yes, in downtown. Yes, yes. And he would commute two nights a week from Pendleton. That's a drive. That you is know a drive. I mean? yeah, that is a yeah. drive. Yeah, that's why that's we haven't commitment. gone yet. Fighting <laughs> traffic. Yeah. So he'd go up there and he got his degree in denim. 
because he's like, I want to make jeans. Nice. They started making so they're oh, veteran, that's the veteran owned dope. brand. It's actually really cool. Wow. Um, and yeah, he, he, they're awesome. They just had an event uh, recently up at a Harley Davidson dealership. So we want to be Delray. involved in this kind of stuff from yeah. one. We want right. to wear it. We want to put it on. We want to promote yeah. you. We want to promote this guy. See, I can I, st- I can still wear pants, whatever pants I want, because we got our uh, our swag coming out, but it's only tops. Yeah. Oh, and I I got some shoes coming, but. Uh, I got to see how we'll, it looks we'll, before we'll I get connect. you guys a We'll pair. connect. Yeah. So, so no, because, it, I mean, another cool thing is I always want to rep brands that support that support MVP, yeah. too. And they 100%. support MVP. 100%. All the tags say MVP on it. Yeah. Oh, let you my know about God. The program. That's amazing. It's awesome. Wow. And, like, the meat the meat I sent you uh, from yeah. Grunt, Grunt Works. Yeah. Veteran-owned company as Love well. Um, and Grunt Works is, yeah, they're, they're uh, it's all, you know, free-range, grass-fed, like, legit. Uh, what you should uh, be eating. Yes, the good meat. Yep. Mm. Um. And yeah, and it's veteran owned business awesome. as well. And they're supporting MVP also. Yeah. So like all those kind of, any opportunity to do that. And thank you for, thank yeah. you for bringing that up. So well I, done I was me. like, I me was too. about to call him I out. I was like, I, I was like, what I'm the like, fuck is he shopping, shopping on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> they are camo. They're camo. Like, camo bro. I couldn't see from oh over my here. Gosh, because I was thinking the because same thing. like, like, I didn't like, see that. You guys have to understand. Like, dude answers his phone on podcasts. Yeah, I mean, like, you I know. Mean, he is always actively working. He he actually runs our, our veteran services. So when they're okay. calling, it's like really important to him. Yeah. And he is like amazing at what he does. Um, couple walking. boring co- podcasts. He just got up and fucking answered his phone. Yeah, and it's out true. The door. Yeah. It's like true. obviously so, you're not a boring. They were calling podcast. about his extended warranty. Yeah, 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 exactly. I just played it off. That so was literally, I was like, holy shit! After this podcast, like he's reached another like element. <laughs> he's shopping online now. Dur- like I was like, I was about to sit, tell him, "Are you bored?" I was like, are you, I was going to, I was well like, done. this close thing. Yeah, good job, Shane. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I'm I like, like really you know, I like the line. I like the fit. It's just, I have a funny body and I'm just going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, he's a, it's a, it's a swimmer's body. It's a swimmer's body. Yeah, he's got a you swimmer's body. So it really, it's yeah. really, yeah. it really yeah. fucked him up, yeah. you know, so growing up with a swimmer's the, body. I can't go with the thin legs because my legs are swimmer's Oh, they've got different stuff. They do. I'm they looking at them. One of them is called the Boyer boot cut. Okay, Boyer boot cut. That's what you That's me. That's me. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so wow. are you gonna do your story? Yeah, let's you do it. Remind yeah, you. I mean, I mean, are we, are we, are we there? Well, I think we have to be. Oh yeah. But uh, can you guys do me a favor, real quick, though? Can you? Uh, bef- we'll talk for a little bit. But can you go on to the in- the Hope by the Sea Instagram, find a, a old reel of me talking about when I worked in the CIA, please? Uh, do, do you? Is this retain? This is. is Don't know. This is. Can't is, even imagine. I'm so no, worried. she has, she knows part of the story okay. already, but she doesn't know the whole deal. Um, of what just happened or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. You know? I, uh, do you guys think I should start? No. Let's just talk. Let's talk some more about the pants. Yeah. So the pants. <laughs> so what? How many different cuts of the pants do oh, they I'll have? Let you know right now. I. The only one that matters is the boyer boot cut. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Dude, he's got a lot. He's got a lot. Skinny jeans. They, got they do. Yeah, he he's got, got a lot. Wow. Jean, loyal. They came uh, around. Yeah, the loyal. loyal so Frankie Loyal, who I I was uh, I was fortunate to be on a few episodes of uh, of Mayans when it was on. Oh, you were. Yeah, cool. which was cool. And Frankie was a series regular. Frankie Loyal. Yeah, he was on every episode. Uh, but he's you know he's big in the you know in the biker community as well, of course. And uh, they just his is like this raw denim that's kind of that you know that like rockabilly oh, yeah. kind of old school yeah. yeah yeah it's 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 pretty dope so that's like is the loyal they're coming out is it only right men now. or is it women too it's 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 women, women are coming i don't think they have like women's yet at but the top, I, that is know? the plan well, i can't see the boot cut I, I can't find huh? the boot cut we got to get we got to see you're the reason now we have what to colors the boot cut what colors the boot cut they have different colors oh they do is camouflage boot cut or no i think so really I think they have it in that. I, I know it because I have a pair. Comfortable athletic that? fit, handcrafted, two to size, 33 inch, size 36, <laughs> Chat, 34 this, actually. What, do you need help? What? I need to pee. Can I pee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. perfect. Pee. I'm just going to go right here. <laughs> have this is a little confession that I, that, I, that I need to make. This is a Christmas confession. Because I, you know, had an incident this weekend. I was, I was, I was at the gym. And, uh, you know, the, the Hopeaholic is getting kind of like, like popular right and i was at the gym this weekend and i'm not like i'm not like used to anybody ever coming up to me at all i'm at the gym this guy comes up to me and he's like hey 
what's your name? And I, I'd never seen this guy before in my life, but I knew it was probably going to be about the Hopeaholics, right? And I was like, I'm Ch I got a little excited. I was like, I'm Chad. <laughs> and he's like, dude, I've seen you on Instagram. And I got even a little bit more excited. I was like, fucking hey, somebody sees me on Instagram. That's fucking cool. And he's like, you used to work in the CIA, didn't you? And I, I was caught up in the moment, you guys. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Wait, I, wait, I, so, I, so, so, like, he was like, you worked for the... And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I saw you on Bob Mennery's podcast. I was like, no, that was my podcast. Bob Mennery was on mine. And he was like, that is awesome, dude. I've got some buddies that work in special forces. And they told me that... Um, you know, sometimes you they'll give you like legal, you know, narcotics to, or, you yeah. know, meth to keep you up. Not He didn't say meth. He said something else. Like an amphetamine. An amphetamine to keep you up when you're doing a mission. And he's like, he's like, so, you know, was it from that that you got addicted to the crystal meth? And I was like, I was like, no, it happened after. <laughs> oh, my God, Chad, <laughs> you let him go. Hang on. Hang on, that's why I'm doing a confession here. And it gets even worse. Because, He's listening right now. Because here's, For sure. the, here's the thing. Then next, the guy reaches out his hand. Stop. And I put my hand out and he shook my hand and he said, thank you for your Stop. service. I knew it. Oh my God, I'm Guess dying. Guess what Chad said. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you're welcome. Now don't let me down. I said, what Chad said. <laughs> you're welcome. You guys, can you put this thing on 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 uh, her Sadly. face real quick? Because I mean, the shock. So I mean, okay. just to recap, so, you guys, poor you man guys has, has it, thinks that Chad is a CIA agent, risked his life. <laughs> thanks, Chad, for his service. Most yeah, CIA and agents got, are like nerds behind a computer. And anyway. thinks he got <laughs> addicted to crystal meth because he was serving his crazy missions up all night, so he needed like Adderall. Bingo. So right now, the guys at the gym thinking, wow, that guy's so cool. I met Chad. He's a CIA agent. But you know what, Chad? Have you guys ever... I just want to question. This isn't for you guys. This is for you guys, but it's also for our, our listeners because our listener... I'm doing a, a real confession here. Yeah. This really fucking happened. I just want to know, have have any of you guys, have any of the lis listeners ever gotten Got caught, caught up, up in the moment? I can't recall. I, 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 for, <laughs> I for sure have. I just can't recall like something yeah. on the degree of like I, I, the I CIA. I I did, but, but I can't recall. But I have fibbed. For sure. Before. I've played. I've, I've, I've fallen yeah. into getting caught up and just like rolling with it because it's like, mm, I don't want to let you down. Yeah. You know? So I feel like that's what happened. You, it caught you off guard. You're at the gym. It fully have, caught me off guard. I wasn't on. expecting like the CIA when the guy said this. I was I'm thinking the Hopeaholics podcast. This is fucking awesome. Maybe take a selfie with him. I don't know. Yeah. Could I, I meet Natalie Eva Marie? Yeah. Something along those lines. I think with the topper though, like everything yeah, is cool to right? play it off. Whatever. Exactly. It's like, mm, you don't want to like end, say, but then the end when he, uh, yeah, that's sticks out his hand and says, you thank you for your service. And you're like, well, you're welcome. You're, I mean, at that point you're, you're so, so caught fucked. up, you're fucked. Right. Yeah. And you guys, you guys do remember, I immediately text you all on the group chat. That's I didn't get it. You didn't get it either. I got it. I, I said somebody. It, uh, I didn't get it. I no, he didn't take it to this. I didn't exactly. know this whole like the scenario. Well, I, I couldn't explain the whole thing in yeah. text. I said somebody recognized me from the Hopeaholics podcast. He thought I worked for the CIA, and, and I, I, I was like, ha ha ha, because yeah, same not. Word. And I, I didn't think he played the role. I didn't take of a it like CIA, a downright, CIA downright agent. Fibber. So, so I have to tell you guys, there's more of more oh, confession that God. goes on. No, it ends there. But the problem is, is you know, I was just beginning my workout. And so was he. Oh, so great. for the next hour, every time I would pass this uh, guy, he would I felt you. I <laughs> <laughs> Chad, thank you for your service, bro. I really appreciate you, man. Every time I passed this guy, I couldn't look at him, man. I was fucking looking the other way. I felt so guilty. Oh. I didn't know what to do. You know why you feel guilty? Because I work a goddamn program. And I don't fucking lie. Good job. Now, I, I, I confess to you guys. We and need then to of bring course, him in. And then, of course, on, my, have to on my way home from the in. gym, I had to call I had to call my wife. 
Oh, God. I called my wife. I told her this story that I just yeah. told you guys. And she goes, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> she said, the next time you see this guy at the gym, you are going to walk straight up to him and you are going to tell him the truth. <laughs> <laughs> like I will absolutely not do that. No, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna wear an FBI shirt it. next time. That's why he's One doing it on air. Quantico. I'm also, I'm also, I'm also gonna say, I'm also gonna say um, one last thing. Um, I was in a meth-induced psychosis, as you heard on this reel. This is the reel that everybody watches, and go read the comments on that. People are like, I knew law enforcement, um, you know, did drugs, and I was like. Did you know that they could jump into an iPhone and become a digital person? Because did you hear that part? <laughs> that I was up for 14, 15 days and I could jump. Yeah. Jump right. into an iPhone. Just hear I mean, it's want. pretty amazing yeah. what the capabilities. It is. Boy, the, the, the technology. The technology. I was one of the only people that could handle the Apple chip. Mm. I was the first one to be chipped um, by Apple. You know, so I... Uh, and that's why I worked for the CIA. Uh, also, my father is an alien. Um, he mm. comes from a different planet. Uh, it's called Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. And my mom, and this is a true story. Uh, my, my mom. <laughs> he is an alien if he's from Saskatchewan. Yeah. Maybe legal, maybe not. Yeah. But, and know, my I mom is, and this is true, she is a descendant of uh, the Medici family in yes. Italy. So my mom is a Medici. So when they came together, they had me, and that's why big trouble. CIA I baby. was this. I I was a CIA baby. So at birth, they knew already that that's. What Are you going to apologize? Yeah. To this what's guy? the solution? Of yeah. What's going to happen? Are you going to see him again? And well, the, here's anything? the thing. Or is this your apology because you hope that he sees? No, him? no. I'm gonna. I, when I see the guy, I'm gonna, gonna tell him the him? truth. I'm gonna tell him I got caught up in the moment. And I'm also uh, gonna tell him that look, if I worked for the CIA, I wouldn't be able to tell you. That's why I always uh, prep. Uh, That's why I, I always bro, end it with, I, I was in there. a meth-induced psychosis. I want to be there videotaping. The what do you think about that? I don't, I'm trying to think of where the, <laughs> you're going to run into him where you don't want to. Like you're going to be <laughs> naked in the locker room yeah. or something. Yeah. And it's like, you're going to see him and be like, hey, buddy. And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. thank you. Oh my <laughs> God. Almost like, let it go. Uh, no, nah, you nah, got it. Nah. You got to tell him. Nah, I hope you're naked you. in the locker room. I hope it's yeah. that awkward moment. You know why he has to tell him? Because it's not like um, it was a stranger, just kind of like. Like if I never me. see the guy again, but dude, it's and he's not a regular at my time, but he says he's seen me at the gym. Yeah, you'll see him often. Yeah. Half the, the half the gym thinks you're in the CIA. Right? Yeah. yeah. By the way. Right. There's no way he's not saying it. Yeah. You know, if he was that excited about it. I know. I have. A, oh, there is a guy no. that works at my uh, at my gym that was like uh, in the special forces, and he's got a cool scar on his cheek right here, and. Um, you know, I've never met the guy, but I know that he was in the special forces. Do you though? I don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but right. the rumor yeah. around the gym is mm. that he got that scar oh my God. in a battle. So and now it was probably started by the guy that thinks you're in the <laughs> yeah. CIA. So now, oh man. It was a fishing accident. Somebody yeah. hooked him in their backswing. What do you guys think about all that shit, man? I mean, that's a fucked up thing. Like, I can't believe I got that caught up in. It wasn't like in the moment. It's not like I wanted to lie to the guy. It's just he said he was so excited. Well, I think it caught you off guard because, like I said, one, you were working out. Two, you had your headphones on. Three, you thought he was going to say something about the Hopaholics, the podcast in general, not the little portion of you talking about your meth-induced uh, nonsense. Working that shit day. isn't even pinned to the top anymore. It's like buried. He will have to go. How far did you guys scroll down? Couple, you gotta, you, you a couple, a while. What are you saying? You got to go deep. <laughs> you got to really gotta go get deep. in there. Yeah. Well. Some funny shit though, yeah, man. There you go. Yeah. Now you. That's now a, you know. That's a real, okay. That's a real, you guys. Coming clean. Yeah, yeah coming clean. clean. Um. I I I just want you guys to know that I, Chad I still Carlson don't feel just did his ninth step. better. No, I wouldn't feel better either. I know it sucks. How are you going to approach him though? It's going to be. A I mean, weird. it's even going to be more awkward if he sees this real yeah, before I see him. Or no, and then, no, I think this will break the ice. Yeah. No, it is what it is. They'll just come up to you and punch you in the back of the head. You know. Liar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well on that note yeah thank you nate so much for coming on the podcast thank you for um yeah. listening to chad's ninth step i like it because it was a big one yeah it was a big it one. was a doozy for having doozy. as many years clean and sober yeah, as i do sure. too you know yeah 
but I get it. I get it for sure being just kind of like thrown off guard and you're just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept rolling. You know what? It was all good until he stuck out his hand oh, God. and yeah. said, thank you for your service. And I'm like, I haven't, I haven't done it. I, I, you're like, I cannot do this. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. That was it. Everything else I could have walked away from and yeah. been fine. But when he said, thank you for your service, I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's what's going to be. We that's, got a that's real, why you're doing it. That's why I'm doing right it. Now. I'm, I am doing this right. I'm confessing yeah. in front of Millions. a special, a special forces yeah. green beret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did good. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. You're a savage. No, Appreciate you um, your, not only your story, but also uh, what you're doing. MVP. continuously yeah. yeah this is huge and we're excited it. to get yeah. involved and help out in yeah capacity so i am too no i, I appreciate fun. you guys having me on yeah and, and, and sharing all this this is great but yeah we've got a uh, with mvp by the way uh, the website oh yes vetsandplayers.org for emerging vets and players but we got our ga a gala coming up it's in uh it's at the star the cowboys practice oh facility my God, no in way. dallas in april so nice. we'll talk about awesome it. yeah oh yeah love to have you guys out nice be cool. yeah you could do an episode. You could do something out there. That'd be awesome. You know. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. that would be cool. We right could bring on. the podcast out there. Yeah. yeah. And There'll then, be some good folks there to yeah. chat with. It'd be kind of cool. That would be cool. We just could set up. We got a whole mobile setup. Nice. We do. Yeah. Oh. Perfect. You just pop these mics off, and then we have a we have a a, a laptop and. Oh, that's amazing. All yeah. the other stuff. Then yeah, that would in. be really cool. That'd be fun, and the star is super cool. It is cool. Mhm. Mm so. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for coming on.